had this shirt that I got right. at Target and it was like uh, Albert Einstein on like this crazy galaxy background. And it was really comfortable and I just thought it was cool looking. It was like Albert was black and white and then there was like this crazy galaxy thing on it. So comfortable, one of my favorite shirts. And then it just disappeared, had no idea what happened to it. I was like, what the heck happened to my favorite shirt? Um, fast forward to like four years later, I'm moving out of my house and I find it behind our washing machine <laughs> and, it, and it was just gross and covered in crap and i did wash it but like now it's like a bedtime shirt it's not a shirt i can wear out anymore yeah, nah. <laughs> it's just a huge bummer All uh, i was gonna say it probably fell into a black hole <laughs> uh All you guys lose any shirts was knocked out of that shirt it's, yeah, you can't do anything with that at that point. My favorite Animal Collective shirt is missing. It's really cool, neon blue and green, and it has like a butt giant snow cone on it. It's like my favorite shirt, wore it for all of college, moved, and can't find it anymore. No. I know, it's really sad. Uh, isn't the worst when you just lose good clothing? I yeah. always, I, I lose... So there's two shirts that I, that I lost that I found. I found both of them this year, and... Both of them I didn't mind losing uh, for two completely different reasons. One of them, uh, one of my best friends, she brought me a shirt that had the Powerpuff Girls on it. And it was pink. It was cool. However, it had the reboot designs on it. And I was like, I don't think I want this, but I'm going to accept it anyway. Uh, And then I lost it, but I found it like two weeks ago. However, the other shirt uh, was given to me um by an ex however mm. the shirt was all right now now that i think about it man it's kind of ironic man i don't even know if i should finish this story the shirt was the final shot from bojack and it said it was nice while it lasted on it uh. <laughs> it had both of them right here with the little heartbeat in the middle uh yeah, and i lost I that, that shirt it's red though. I have it now. Uh, it's in one of these drawers. I found it recently. Why don't I have that shirt? No idea. Why? Mm. Why do I have it and you don't? And Getting I'm not that from an ex though. Me. That's yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Because pretty soon we were saying that. No. <laughs> not too long after. Tariq, did you remember to uh, rank episodes this week? Because I just remembered. I actually did. I remembered. Like on like the third or fourth episode, I was like, "Fuck, we rank these, don't we?" Yeah, right. I remember it uh, ten minutes ago. So we'll see how that goes. Am I the only one that came to class prepared? Did I yeah, come that's... to class prepared? <laughs> oh wow! Wow! I wrote down like a one sentence about how I feel for each of the episodes to like uh-huh. help me rate them later, but I didn't want to. I don't know. I feel like when I rank things and then I keep adding to it, I'm like. It, the, the scale at which I rate things changes. Yes. And the I have bar that is so too. raised later in the season. So <laughs> I guess it's different. You. I'm not going to lie. My notes, uh, my notes this time around, not great. Me I was, neither. Uh, I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I had a real busy, I had a real busy couple days while I was watching this. So I was like cleaning my house and stuff while I was watching. And uh, I didn't like, I, I like, I paid very close attention, but I was not, free to like type out my notes so we're gonna we're gonna see how this goes i know how i feel about them and i know which ones i love and it's gonna be a great experiment i definitely Uh, don't have a bunch of quotes written down like i did last time um i just have like thoughts right for sure like what well we'll see how it goes uh i don't know let's do the theme song i guess theme song cool yeah i agree (laughs) Watching them for years, it's always been something that fit with all the animated characters that's doing their own bits. With a fry who's in the future and a family guy that sucks. It's the father from a Hello Burger family that is about to show and spies is the same guy, except he totally same f- and diverse. Let's watch cartoons that uh, uh, yeah, that's bananas. <laughs> as rough. <laughs> What the f*** is up, everybody? Welcome to Cartoons That Curse, the podcast about adult animated series that say swear words. My name is Johnny. Um, This is my co-host, Tariq. Say hi, Tariq. Hi, Tariq. 
There he is. And we are joined by our very good friend, Offbeat Kiki. Keeks, how are you today? I'm fucking great, bitches. <laughs> you for, you I like how low, swear. I like how like aggressive the words were but low-key the delivery was <laughs> yeah no I'm, I'm i'm feeling pretty good i'm excited i uh recently remembered that i love archer because of this podcast i'm looking perfect forward to it. purple That's is good the theme. timing uh, What's the for theme? an obvious reason, purple. Oh purple yeah, is the theme. yeah. Uh, I'm also purple. feeling very purple. Yeah, purple. but that's like always the case. I'm gonna just bring up something on my computer that's purple, so that I look purple <laughs> yes. too. All right, join us. I dyed purple my hair supremacy. again today for you guys. Oh, so sweet. I dyed <laughs> mine too, which is under the hat. <laughs> Can't tell. All right, I don't know if this is gonna work. Bright purple screen. Just pulling up a picture of Grimace. I mean, there are websites where you can just make a color go across the whole screen. I've used that for like lighting tricks before. Hmm. Ooh. Let's see. You want to pull a Grimace up? You want to pull a picture of Grimace up? Oh, it's working. Look at that. Yes. It's working there. Let's put it over here. Nope. Not, not working. <laughs> there. Yeah. Ooh, this side booty. of my face yes. is purple now. Purple poppy. <laughs> We're going to adjust that a little bit. That's purple enough, I think. I yeah, think it is. I think that's good enough. It's probably going to change because I'm always messing with stuff on my screens. And now I have two monitors. This is a whole new situation for me. Fancy. So we're going to see we're going to see how I how I handle it. But I'm a little purple now. So uh, for you listening at home, mm -hmm. we all have purple lights on us. If you're right. listening, yep. if you're watching on YouTube, you know what's happening. If you're listening, you're <laughs> yeah. confused and like, why are you talking about colors on a podcast? Well, I your, get it. your Spotify should now be purple. Mm -mm, it's uh, green. It's always green. <laughs> nah, it should be purple. But we we did it. Yep. We fixed oh, yeah. it. We paid yeah. Spotify. Pay. Which is weird. Like, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, I was just supposed to sell that. <laughs> no, they paid us. <laughs> Respectfully. We're finally talking about Archer again. We've we Are talked we about Archer season one like two months ago. And uh, it feels longer than that. It feels pretty long. Uh, and but it was a long time ago and Archer season one was great. We were like, we're going to do Archer season two. And then I got a job. I was busy. We were both busy and we just did movies and stuff for a while. And now we're back to Archer for at least a little bit. And right. uh, it's going to be it's going to be great. Uh, it's going to be an adjustment, <laughs> though, going back to this seasonal format. Yeah. I'm so used to just talking about one thing. And now it's like, All yeah. right, we gotta talk about 13 things. I feel like we did movies for so long that I got spoiled because I don't know why, but this was rough. I was like, oh, yes. man, is is there's more of this? I don't have to just pay attention for an hour and a half? Oh, no. Yeah. We really should have saved more movies for when we needed breaks in between all these long seasons, but we'll see how I, it movies goes. Movies rock, man. This should just yeah. be the movie pod. Yeah. Yeah, there's not enough movie podcasts out there. We should talk about movies That's true. instead. Yeah, man. <laughs> We well, doing? South Park just got like 14 movies ordered. Oh, so we got it. You guys have yeah. some, some weird yeah. stuff coming down the line. Why That's didn't we so do crazy. that for the cold open? Well, we could just talk about how. Honestly, uh, I'm going to be honest. It, the reason is because this that we're tomorrow we're recording an episode that comes out before this. And I wanted to do oh, this then for the yeah, cold open true. because that will come out first. But we can talk about that now also, um, which we, is insane. We, we have Park, 14 yeah. episodes of Cartoons That Curse to do. That's going to be bonkers because yeah. so South Park, for those of you who haven't heard, just had signed a massive deal. Six more seasons on Comedy Central. So it's going to go mm -hmm. at least through season 30 and 14 Paramount Plus South Park movies, which sounds fake. <laughs> that doesn't yes. sound like a thing. That is. Yeah. You forgot, you forgot I, the, the, the wildest part about it is the bag. Yes, they made nine hundred million dollars on this deal. Uh, that's almost a billion dollars for the little kids in Colorado. <laughs> it's it's for crazy. South Park in twenty twenty one. That's crazy. Yeah. The bad, and they're also yeah, allegedly dude. gonna save Casa Bonita, which is cool. Casa Bonita has been that bankrupt, is, yeah, and is, yeah. now the South Park creators are gonna save it, which I like. Um, but yeah, this Bag. is bonkers. I have a feeling we'll probably talk. We pr you probably have heard this two weeks in a row if you're listening to the pod. But I have a feeling that these movies will be more akin to like the vaccination and pandemic special, maybe a little yeah. longer. But right. they're I think they're framing them as movies to make them sound big and exciting for 
the streaming service to get people to sign up and it's going to work. I'm going to sign up for Paramount Plus now, apparently. But <laughs> um, they I have a feeling they'll be more like the specials or like how South Park over the years has done big trilogy stories like Imagination Land plays like a movie if you watch it all together, you know, um, even though it's three episodes combined. So I have a feeling they'll do fun. They'll just do fun, bigger stories that they normally would split into three episode arcs. They're going to do for these movie quote unquote movies, right. which works for me. Yeah. I, think it'll, I think it'll be good. I was assuming the same thing. It's probably just like longer episodes mm-hmm. <laughs> really, but it's, ex- it's exciting for them. I mean, they've been around since 1997. So if they're doing six more seasons, that'll be like 30 years of South Park, which is yeah. nuts. It's insane. <laughs> And I feel like it feels like maybe, I don't know, who knows, may, they might change their mind at some point and they might like, they all, they feel, I feel like they're constantly changing their mind about South Park, but it feels like, um, it feels like maybe at this point they're like, all right, we'll go out with a bang, 14 movies and six more <laughs> seasons and we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll wrap this thing up in a big way. Uh, but I could also see them very much like, you know coming up on season 30 and being like, do we really want to end South Park? Can we actually do that? Mm-hmm. And uh, who knows? They might not want to. I feel like they, I feel like they're uh, in a codependent relationship with South Park. <laughs> 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 they, they can't quit it. <laughs> we'll see. It's, gotta it's suck. an institution. You know, yeah, this point, it's a fun, gotta be a fun way to make a living though. Just to, <laughs> just to make, make a thing that's entirely yours for 30 years. And right. uh, yeah, I'm also eager to see and hopeful that like maybe these movies will do weird, you know, experimental stuff. Maybe they'll do spinoff stuff. But Tariq, you and I were talking about like, what if they just did a Butters movie? You I know? want a Butters <laughs> oh movie. God. I want yeah. a Butters movie so bad. I want a Butters it's, movie. Yeah. It should be called Butters' very own movie. Um, yes. Yes, it <laughs> it's should. Like, it's like the Piglet movie. <laughs> uh, like no, but don't character. make it like the Piglet movie, though. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen um, the Piglet movie? The Piglet? No, uh, I haven't not, seen the Piglet movie. It's not bad. It's just kind of. I don't want to call it stupid either because it's fucking Piglet. It's <laughs> harmless, but like it's. <laughs> I don't know, man. The Piglet movie is just like. Piglet goes missing, and instead of looking for Piglet, they say, "Damn, I miss Piglet." Remember this time, and then they flash back. <laughs> it's like go talk about find Piglet. Piglet. Go find your friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Man, they did so much for Tigger in the Tigger movie, and that's what they do for Piglet. Yeah, okay, so that's all right. Because I, I saw. <laughs> all right, we're, we're never going to get the Archer. I saw the Piglet okay, this movie. Is a good tangent. <laughs> this is a good tangent. I saw the Piglet movie in theaters. I remember I was, I was a child. I have the Game Boy Advance game somewhere in here. And, like, <laughs> yeah, I just remember it being really sweet and wholesome and stuff when I was a kid. I watched it last year. And then I was just kind of like, I'm like, okay, so I remember this and I remember that. But like, is this really just them thinking about all of the, because it's called Piglet's Big Movie. And it's about Piglet feeling so small that he doesn't exist. Uh, And then like, his friends kind of forget that he exists too. And then it's about them realizing like, oh shit, Piglet, even though he's small, He's a big part of our lives. And I don't fucking know. They go find they, like they don't they don't go find him, but then they actually end up finding him by accident because he saves the day. Pooh almost dies, I think. He like he's like hanging wow. off a cliff by his shirt. They almost space jam uh, to'd him like with bugs. <laughs> yeah. Oh spoilers. spoilers. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> but yeah, but uh, I, I almost wish they did, man. You know how rad that'd be if like Pooh just dies. <laughs> That'll be, yeah, yeah, that'll do it. That'll be the one. We can talk about that up here at that point, right? Cause he, the death cause, of Pooh. Uh, he might not. I mean, like, Pooh doesn't curse, but I feel like if Pooh died, it'd just be like, oh, fuck. It'll be a, like, it'll be a Patreon thing. Like, he'll say, we'll talk, we'll talk dies. about all of it on Patreon. We'll talk about Shrek. We'll talk about the Space Shrek. Jams. We'll talk about. I don't know what else we're we talking about on Patreon. Paddington. That's what that's our lineup for Patreon. Whenever we do it, right. is four Shrek movies, uh, <laughs> two Space Jams, and both Paddingtons. Right. Hey, oh, look who look it at is! That. <laughs> look who it is! It's for those Shrek, listening man. on Spotify, 
Keeks just held up their wireframe holographic Shrek thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, and uh, guess whose fault that is that they have that? Yeah. yeah. Hey, wait. Hold it's on, this guy sec. who makes terrible video essays. <laughs> <laughs> They're so great. I do a pretty bad. I Shrek I supremacy and everybody on this podcast's house, <laughs> and it is my fault. <laughs> You've given both of us Shrek gifts. Everybody <laughs> owns Shrek, and it's me. Uh, anybody in the comments that uh, loves Shrek, I'm holding it down. I promise. I, I mean, I I also love Shrek. Shrek That's is true. Love you Shrek do. Life, you do. Yeah. The fact that you gave Johnny Shrek things is like a whole other. Yeah, story. it's a whole thing because I, I want to join Shrek. you guys on Patreon for Pooh's Grand Adventure. Okay, that's, that's what I'm calling. <laughs> Who's great? The Skeletorus scene is scary. <laughs> we got a lot Who's to do for Patreon scary. then. Uh, comment below if you want the Patreon content soon because that might motivate us. <laughs> or if you'll pay, Who pay us money for more content and then we'll probably make it. <laughs> that's yeah, maybe. a pretty easy decision when people are like, here's some money. <laughs> um, well, good south park and winnie the pooh and shrek tangent now <laughs> how did i even talk about piglet oh because i because I, okay. I, I said butter's very own movie like piglet's big movie butter's big movie um, butter's big movie butter's that's big the name movie. of this episode but I, it should but it should be called butter's very own movie because that's what his episode's called butter's very right. own episode um anyways let's talk about archer season two so Last we talked about Archer, it was season one, a 10 episode first season that is quite funny. Um, Mm -hmm. A great introduction to the character and the show. Season two, I I think really continues like it continues the momentum season one built up and has some of my favorite ups of the whole show in here. Um, There's 13 episodes instead of 10. There's a lot of weird episode orders in in archer because season one is 10 and then it's like 13 for a few seasons and then they drop back down to 10 and then some of them are only eight there's just a whole Mm -hmm. just a whole variety of episode counts for each season um well how did you how how do you guys feel about archer season two overall you like you like archer season two how do you how do you enjoy it compared to season one if you remember season one (laughs) i had a lot of fun um i haven't seen this season since i was in high school which is a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. um, so around when these episodes like dropped on Netflix or whatever is the first, probably the first time that I watched them and the last time that I watched them. Um, so it was interesting. There's definitely some stuff that I think wouldn't fly today necessarily mm-hmm. airing on television. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And it's also wild hearing them call the agency ISIS. Um, yeah. Although, I, we, did they switch back to that in the laser, later seasons? No, they like never switched back to that it. On the wiki? Okay. I don't but yeah, think so. Given the I mean, way that did. that's like come to stand for something else, like and something much more sinister in the last 10 years, that was interesting. Like they, uh, watching it and being like, oh, yeah, they hadn't changed that yet. Right. They they specifically like I, I think once ISIS became a thing in real life, they uh, there's I think it's season four, maybe um, mm-hmm. somewhere in there, like a few seasons deep that happened. And they don't even like draw super great attention to it. If I recall, I'm pretty sure you just see them no. like taking down the ISIS sign in the background and moving it out. Which is very funny. And like, yeah, it's what you got to do. But it is it is funny how like for so long ISIS was Archer and then it was uh, not that anymore. And so, yeah, uh, going back, it's weird, but you kind of just have to adjust. <laughs> you have to adjust your brain. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, so the first episode is called Swiss Miss, which starts off uh, <laughs> in a pretty interesting fashion. It's the it's the episode where Isis goes to protect a German billionaire's daughter who continuously tries to seduce Archer, which gets him into a whole lot of trouble. Um, so it's a pretty uncomfortable episode overall. Yes. <laughs> so hey, we man. start season two. Um, uh, yeah, it, it was interesting because last time I watched this, I was an underage teenage female and uh, just thought it was funny. And now I'm watching it 10 years later and I'm like, this is hard for me to enjoy, mm-hmm. even though this used to be hilarious. There are still moments to make yeah. me laugh. But this right. is the one specifically that I don't think would fly by today's standards. Fair conceptually yep. like it's like what the fuck like i i don't know man like i when i was watching it like i just 
when I saw what they were doing, I'm like, oh, there's no way. And then they, and they, they like, they play with that expectation a little bit. And then they do a line. Archer says a line while I was like, all right, all right, all right. That's, that's nuts. He says, uh, cause I think she like takes her shirt off or something. He says, seriously though, the minute you turn 18, call me. And I was like, geez. I know I wrote that yeah. down. I was like, yeah. Yeah. not Which, good. Admittedly is very Archer though. He's not a good right. dude. Yes. <laughs> like, you know? right. and, and like, and also like, I feel like part of the interesting thing is it's playing on like people's expectations of Archer. It's playing on the expectation that he would do something that awful. And the whole time he's not, which is like, which is kind right. of interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, even, even he is like, no, fuck no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah. Um, I think that's how they get away with it in right. the end is like the entire time. Archer's like, dear God, people, please believe me. I'm not doing Ex- this. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it still doesn't make it uh, any less uncomfortable, but yeah, <laughs> at least, you know, at least there's a line <laughs> with Archer. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's uh, it, it would have been it would have been wild if they went any other direction with this. But there are still some like cool and funny parts of this episode. Um, like I think the um, yeah. I re- this is one where you really realize that they're I think they're, that their budget jumped up because the the like the ski the uh what's it called um the snowmobile chase sequence is pretty feels pretty action packed uh, yeah, it does. especially mm-hmm. especially compared to season 1 which doesn't have like a lot of very dynamic animation in it uh yeah, yeah so there's like there's some fun stuff going on there um did you guys have any other specifics about swiss miss that you enjoyed or disliked? Um, or? Yes. Um, Pam and Air Schlotz drinking in a hot tub because they both grew <laughs> up on cow farms. Mm. And then Mallory tries to go, like, you know, be with Air Schlotz. And then she just gets in the hot tub with them. And then they oh, drink yeah. green Russians and have a threesome. <laughs> like, I really did not expect that little side story to happen. Um, I, and then. What was, <laughs> what was weird about that for me is that. Uh, <laughs> That was the second threesome story I watched today. <laughs> there was a threesome story in the new iCarly that came out today. Oh and yeah! I was oh. like, "Geez, yeah, nah." Carly and Freddie were about to. Never mind. I can't talk about that here. Uh, and it's but- Esther Povitsky, which is um, an actress I really like. So yeah, that looks fun. I haven't seen that episode yet. It was. A good, it was. It was- it was good. It was better than today's episode of Dave, which I was really upset about because I was like, how was I Carly better than Dave today? I don't know. <laughs> Something's, today is broken somehow. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I think going back to what Keeks just said, like I like I really love what the season does with Pam overall, which we'll talk about more. Mm-hmm. But like I feel like at the end of last season, they started to do it a little bit, but they like start to develop Pam into like this really interesting kind of badass <laughs> throughout. This. Right. And like this kind of like, I don't know, there's just a lot more to Pam, I feel like, than initially. Like it, when you go back mm-hmm. to the first like the beginning of season one. And she's just the like HR person who everyone kind of shits on. And mm-hmm. like and now she and then she just like she's kind of. Even already here in season two, she becomes kind of a badass, especially later in the season. There's one episode right. where she's like a real badass, yeah. <laughs> which is great. Right. Because that's uh, what when we were watching it uh, the first season, I remember being really confused about it because I just I don't remember Pam letting people kick her around that often. So, like, that's why it was weird seeing like that's how she, that's how she started out. It's because I'm so used to Pam like yelling back at people like holding yeah. her own that yeah. kind of thing like that's what that's why i love pam i think pam is really rad and they kind of they do because the one thing that they do with her that I'm, I'm not that big a fan of is when they like that like everybody just acknowledges like oh yeah no nah, she's just kind of gross i don't like that i think i don't i don't i'm not i'm not i'm not that big a fan of that but like they <laughs> like dies down <laughs> yeah i don't i don't like what they're like but it's just, like they just look at pam and they say like ew it's like yeah, come on son like oh I, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah i mean you know yeah I mean? there's kind of there's something to be said about like just a little bit of internalized fat phobia there and just like picking yeah. pam specifically to always mm-hmm. be the, the gross lady even though she's like a total badass and funny right. and like has sex with a lot of characters so clearly yeah. people desire her right that was yeah i wasn't yeah. thinking it in terms of like them seeing her as like physically gross more so like how pam pam like becomes more and more of like this like very sexually liberated character over the oh, show no, no so, that's like, what is just, rad okay yeah. and there's and there's so much like and there's just so much like 
sexual talk surrounding her and it's not even <laughs> so much that it's pam but it's just that like she's down for anything which can right. sometimes be gross you know what right. i mean right yeah and no so, that's that's yeah. that's when it's yeah. rad to me i here. mean yeah. she literally says in this episode swiss miss that she's attracted to the the guy's daughter like like she dead right. ass just says that that's and they're true like, what is wrong with you that's true so yeah, yeah i did go. write down why is pam attracted to a minor that was right. one of my notes Fair. Very um, fair question. <laughs> <laughs> One of which but, um, I have no answer. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Another thing I love, though, um, is when Gillette was, like, watching the snowmobile chase from far away, and he's like, oh, cool, a Pink Floyd show. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love Ray. Just he's a- so funny. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I, like, uh, just remembered that um, Adam Reed is his voice actor, like, yeah. within the last, like, couple days. Yeah, it's a funny voice. <laughs> it's a it good is. voice. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, let's move on to a going concern. The second episode of the season. Um, this is one where Mallory loses all her money in a Ponzi scheme and has to sell. Is trying to sell ISIS to Odin. Um, how do you guys feel about this one? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I watched this one like two months ago when we were going to do Archer season two <laughs> and I don't remember enough about it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I wrote that that episode like didn't make too big of an impression on me. Like that was my summary sentence. Um, Mallory sells ISIS. Pam is dressed in like braids. Yeah, and, like, I wrote a Jamaican Pam with, with mad baby. ellipses. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um it was weird seeing barry as like a fully human character just because i have the, the the bionic barry like memory of him mm. in my head as like default barry yeah, yeah. six million um, dollar man barry but yeah it i don't know it just didn't make that big of an impression on me for whatever reason i honestly couldn't tell you most of what happens in that episode and i watched it like three days ago <laughs> did these is now is did this these the one where they... order? no I don't think so. Then, um, then why do they it, act like they didn't see Barry for a while in the next episode? Or am I tripping? Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's a bunch of time. I mean, Barry doesn't Barry doesn't come back for a few episodes, doesn't he? Doesn't he come back? He's in the next one. He's in Blood Test, isn't he? Is or he really? Isn't I, right? I feel like it might have been back. passive. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. Maybe he did. Um, I don't know. Maybe they were just not written in conjunction with each other. I don't know. Adam Reed writes Maul. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll figure it out. But um, I uh, I like Barry as a character. Is this the one where like Len Trexler ends up being like like where they like mess up his brain entirely and he becomes obsessed with the rabbit? <laughs> Len Len Trexler. Oh, yes. runs Odin. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is. I remember that think, very specifically. That's the uh, the line I wrote down is. Uh, you're mean and I don't like you. He says it to Mallory. <laughs> That's right. And he's obsessed with his rabbit, Robert Klein. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is very funny. I like that. Uh, I like that rabbit name. I Yeah, this is like such a forgettable episode to me. And, you know, part of that is that I watched it a couple months ago and I didn't rewatch it before we did this episode. But um, I also watched Swiss Miss a couple months ago and I remember that one. So, uh, right. <laughs> yeah. This yeah, one has, uh, yeah. it has, they, uh, when they're trying to, form a plan i laughed really hard at archer making lana like the little black barbie doll and him making pam like the little rasta ball <laughs> uh, <laughs> is this the one where pam's all rasted out <laughs> she like, yeah, it's the, yeah i wrote jamaican <laughs> yeah. pam uh in That's my notes what, yeah. <laughs> yeah i just wrote why is pam dressed like that question mark exclamation point crying emoji it's so <laughs> funny she, reaction. and she she keeps smoking jamaican weed yeah she's the just smoking big joints episode. right yeah man it's, uh, it's so funny i think that's cool i think that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah pam really goes like she goes to a lot of places this year <laughs> she does <laughs> pretty funny she, wait one more thing about pam <laughs> is that she's tan too, which is like just a small detail, but she's tan the entire episode. I noticed right. that too. They darkened <laughs> her skin is, for that episode. Yeah. It's the idea that she just came she just came back from Jamaica and is yeah, just like, she says, oh, that, yeah. she says she went yeah. to 
Yeah, uh, that's funny. She, yeah, she's got the like the braids that so many so many white people who go to Jamaica come back with. <laughs> right, like, yeah. just fully braided out, and uh, and it's like the first shot of the episode. Like they don't even <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's pretty funny well she didn't last long that Jama- jamaican pam <laughs> it was a one episode thing <laughs> yep. uh, but this is not the last episode where someone gets high the whole damn time we'll get to that one in a bit um, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um well do you guys have anything else to say i like i wish i had more to say about this one but i just forgot a lot of it i apologies to the viewers <laughs> we, we, i watched this too long ago uh only other thing I have in my notes is uh I really like the timing on uh after Archer goes through Mallory's desk and touches all of the dildos and shit. And uh <laughs> and like Ray comes in and says something like while wow, they're on the phone and then you don't even see Archer do it, but like he just throws like a, a vase at him and it just like cracks immediately. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's really I thought I thought that was timed really, really, really well. Like it was really fast. Uh, he's Thank like, God. there's no sink in here. Yeah. He thought it was <laughs> <laughs> uh gross. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well let's move on to the third one. Blood test. Uh this is the one where Trinette, the prostitute from season one who we meet is uh goes to archer with uh allegedly his newborn son seamus the wee baby seamus as they call him wee baby and Seamus. Uh, and this is the one where he's got to get a he's got to get a paternity test uh which is a plot line that i like as it goes on in the show i really enjoyed especially in this season <laughs> what they kept doing with wee baby seamus um, yeah it's it's very mm-hmm. funny to me and then obviously the big twist of the episode is that it's actually Cyril's biological son. But according to the court system, because is it because of a switch? It's because they switched the paternity test and it turns right. out. And so they switched they the switched paternity the sample, test yeah. so that yeah. he can get out so that Archer can get out of it. But as it turns out, it's really Cyril's kid. So Archer is locked into child support, <laughs> right. which is very funny. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, that and that also just like makes a lot of sense with both uh, both of these characters. That's something Archer would do, and also no no surprise with the twist that it's Cyril's <laughs> Cyril's kid. After Cyril's a nasty dude, man. He's a nasty. He's the worst. He's a nasty dude. Yes, he Cyril is the worst. Sucks. <laughs> he man. sucks. He is the worst. I feel like this episode is kind of just there to like establish some story elements for later and introduce the wee baby Seamus as a character. <laughs> um, I feel like it's like kind of one of the weaker ones in the season, even if mm-hmm. I still think there are things that are funny about it. Yep. I agree. It's low on my I, list. I definitely. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Uh, um, oh, they keep there's a running joke in this one that I think is really funny. Um which one? I think it I think it's at like the uh little baby shower thing, but every single t- every time there's a window, like I don't know who it is. I, is it Kruger? I don't know who it is, but somebody keeps yelling "Me too!" Like after every. Oh, it's Krieger. You know, it's Krieger. Okay. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it feels like it was a post-production joke a couple of times. It feels like because it feels right. like the same delivery, and I think they just like it doesn't. It almost feels like it wasn't written in the script. They're just like just add another "Me too" in after but this. But it's, it's so funny though. Yeah. Like it's really funny. I like it a it's, lot. It's good delivery too. Me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, I wrote that it keeps getting funnier and funnier the more they did it. Like it is right. one of those. It reminds me of um, uh, Cape Fear and the Simpsons. Cape Fear with the uh, the rakes, the rakes, the mm-hmm. Shazobaki stepping on the rakes, which is like they only padded that out for so long because the episode was short, and they were like, "How is this thing is still twenty seconds short? Just keep making them step on the rakes." And <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of that. <laughs> is that why they did that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they, they the did episode the was joke. short. They did the rake joke because the episode was short. That's amazing. Yeah, the episode was oh short, so they're like, and it's it like, wasn't like because I think the gag w- like with there being several rakes was always a thing, but, but they the just fact kept that going. It kept, yeah, the fact that it kept going was like, yeah, the episode was short. <laughs> That's so funny, and it's like an iconic joke now. It's like an yeah. iconic Simpsons joke. That's great. Oh, good stuff. Um, man. Uh, yeah, I like, but I think you're, I think you're right, Keeks. Like, it does feel like the things I remember about this episode are all the things that it sets up, which is like the wee baby mm. Seamus and like that, that 
which comes into play later in the season. And it like kind of plays off of the whole Cyril just being addicted to sex and right. And, okay. Uh, yeah. That is yeah. Here. That is, that yeah. Does sound here. Which is, they keep, uh, why do they keep assaulting uh, Cyril in the in the bathroom? <laughs> they do that uh, yeah. like twice. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh. Um, the three things I like take away from this episode is like Lana getting baby crazy. Um, oh, that does happen. Woodhouse used to do heroin. <laughs> yes, forgot about that. Doesn't that? Um, but doesn't he do it with like a monkey in the first season? Oh, that's right. That does happen in the first season. We right. see it a little bit in, the, okay. in, in in when when they burn Archer, right? When they burn him, right? In, in, right. In the burn so one. when they when they brought it up, I was like, I feel like we knew this, but right. Archer didn't. And like, I, yeah. and I was trying to figure out why. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, All well, right. I forgot. No, it's not. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that because of you. <laughs> I swear, I only know this. It's because okay. it's my job. <laughs> all right. Uh, um, so, uh, and then the the other thing is when they're all doing presents at the birthday party or the, the the baby shower, Cheryl literally gives them a book about SIDS, which is sudden infant death syndrome. <laughs> like, there's no reason for her to give them that Cheryl, book. Cheryl she is, is literally insane. deranged. Yeah. I, the, the quote Jeez. that she said that made me laugh the most this episode was, sometimes I think I'd like to adopt a little baby so I could abandon it at a mall. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she does say that, doesn't oh, she? Man. really is unhinged. She's completely deranged. Yeah. And there's another great episode in this season that like super showcases how deranged she is. Yeah. But it's uh but yeah, it's that's bonkers. Um <laughs> going back to your your uh suspicion streak, I'm just reading I'm reading here on the Archer Wiki. Blood Test mm-hmm. was the first episode produced for the second season, but it was aired as the third episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, common that common explains. happening for season two as seven out of 13 episodes produced were aired out of order from their production. Wow. Which is interesting. That's a lot. Uh, that for makes such sense, a short though, season. Yeah, I thought because they, they bring up, uh, what is it, like his, his broken femur? Is that what it is? Like uh, for Barry? Oh, do uh, they? They bring it up here and they're like, oh, I haven't oh. seen you since that. And I was like, what the fuck? He was in the last one. Like, and so I just kind of, yeah. that's why I wrote oh, down, sure. like, was it out of order? Um, Cause I, I was like, I, I've just seen him. <laughs> and it's interesting that they then didn't, unless, unless I'm mistaken, I haven't, I got to look at my DVD. Um, I don't think they, I don't think they fixed the order on the DVD. Oh, wow, man. Yeah. Oh. Um, interesting. Very Interesting. All right, you guys got any other thoughts on Bloodline before or Blood Test before we move to Pipeline Fever? No, I think that's all I got for Blood Test. I think it was interesting seeing Mallory have like a human moment, um, like calling Archer and being like, you might like being a parent. Oh, yeah. That like, that's nice. true. There's like little sprinklings of humanity in these episodes that I didn't remember. Like in the first one, like Anka made me uncomfortable most of the time, but then there's that scene where she and Archer are like talking about how they were basically neglected their entire childhoods and he relates to her and they're just like sprinkling little character moments like that throughout these hilarious episodes. And that's a really good, and actually that is a good moment that we didn't talk about in Swiss Miss. I really, I actually do really Mm -hmm. like that scene because they're both like, I mean, they've, yeah, they've both got obviously very different upbringings, but they could relate on that level how, you know, Mm -hmm. being, being, you know the the child of someone important in some realm leads to being neglected mm-hmm. in a certain way that they have like all these other responsibilities that are important to them uh, and over their children and then so that they you know they get the they get the wrong side of that stick which is uh it's yeah and that's like and that's honestly like the core that's kind of the core of Archer's character it like it's why it's why he sucks kind of you know he like yeah, he is it, a totally it, neglected childhood yeah. And he's like totally braggadocious on the surface too. So like whenever they do give you these character moments about Archer, that's like part of the reason I love this show so much is because he's not just like a douchebag for no reason. Like not that not that, you know, trauma justifies being a shitty person, but like right. you know, he has the things right. that condition him to be the way he is. Uh let's move on to Pipeline Fever. Pipeline Fever is uh a good episode i like pipeline fever and i think this is like this is one of the first ones uh this is like a big (laughs) one where they start to 
talk about Burt Reynolds a ton, which I love. But this is one where <laughs> Archer and Lana go to Louisiana to stop an eco-terrorist, which uh, is a cool setting. I really love like the bayou as a setting for this episode. I think that's yeah. really cool. Uh, and I also just think this is like a good, it's a good Lana and Archer episode. Um, I agree. Yeah. I remember this being one of my favorite episodes when I was younger because I was like a hardcore Lana and Archer shipper. So I right. loved the scenes where they were just bantering with each other during the stakeout. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, there's, and there, I like, um, yeah, I like their, like, obviously they've got like a very antagonistic relationship because of their history mm-hmm. and past, but this is like, this puts them in a situation where they really have to like work together. And then like when Lana messes up her hands, it's like Archer really, really does like a good job making sure she's okay and taking care of her mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And you kind of see a little bit of the like relationship we never saw, like the good sides of their relationship that yeah. we never saw. Um, and I think this is where all the tinnitus jokes really kick off for the season two. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a lot of tinnitus in this season. Ma, ma. <laughs> it's one of yeah. my favorite callbacks, <laughs> even though it's fucked up. That's how I learned about tinnitus was Archer. <laughs> I didn't know yeah. what tinnitus <laughs> was until I watched Archer. Uh, it's so funny. Um, but yeah, and then you, and then this one also, is this the one where you kind of learn a little bit more about Lana's past? Is that, like as a, as a um oh, maybe it's a different yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. You learn the, about she's her. She's like, like a, a protester, exactly. the eco terrorist. Oh, yeah, she's is got the one. beautiful afro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's interesting to learn, like that she she literally was recruited to be an agent like as she was protesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like just staring Mallory down and being like, I'm not scared of you. Yeah. He calls her Angela Davis. <laughs> it's, it's really funny. <laughs> oh man. Um but yeah, like I said, I like, I think this is a cool setting. It's a, like the bayou is cool. I think there's like this. It's not a setting we've seen in the show before. So much of the show is like actually most of this. A lot of the season takes us to new places. Like I liked like the, yeah. um, the 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 mountains and the like snowmobile chase was a cool setting in that first episode. And this one takes us to this cool like swampy bayou and you get gators, bunch of gators, <laughs> which is cool. Gators are always a good uh, always always throw a wrench in things. So I like, I like when they bring gators into cartoons. Um, I love how two of Archer's fears are alligator attacks and crocodiles. Like two <laughs> yeah, out of three yeah, yeah. are yeah. a very similar animal. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the third is a brain aneurysm, which I share yeah, that fear. Yeah, which is terrifying. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm uh, on the same page there. Uh, it's pretty funny. Uh, I also like that. Isn't, doesn't, doesn't he specifically know doesn't he specifically know every type of gator that might be uh, in that yeah. bayou? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he's like yeah, memorized yeah. all of the gator attacks in recent yeah. years and stuff. Or, I mean, it might not even recent. I think he knows like a lot of gator attacks. Yeah, he like, obsesses over it. Like very much hyper fixates on the history of gator attacks, which is really funny. You know how to get out of there, man. I feel him. Uh, good stuff. Um, what do you guys think about any you guys any other thoughts on uh, <laughs> on Pipeline Fever? Do you like this... Uh, story overall any th- any standout moments no yeah i uh i agree with keeks i like just them talking like i i really mm-hmm. just enjoy that i enjoy like the back and forth and seeing that part of the relationship that like we just didn't get to see because i think like the thing in the first season was just introducing to us that something did happen um and just kind of playing with the tension that like comes from something happening but like you don't really get to see what it was like or how they were with each other you just see how they are now yeah uh, so yeah i thought i thought all that stuff was like really interesting and it was really fun and plus uh this, this one opens with uh them not telling pam that there's a woman's bathroom uh, <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> just like what, what the hell? I forgot about Maybe she that. is a little bit gross. <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of yeah. Yeah. shitting jokes. There are. There's like, I mean, in season one, there's literally a scene where, like, she's just on the toilet while <laughs> Cyril and Cheryl are having oh, sex. Yeah. You can like see her on the toilet in the background. Yeah. That's like the blimp one, man. Yeah, that Sky Titanic, Titanic. Great yeah. episode. Yeah. That episode rules. That's one of my favorites. That's what probably yeah. my I think I ranked that as my favorite season one. That episode um, rules. I love, I love the how Bert- Pam doesn't give a fuck. 
that I Me think that's too. what I draw out, out of that from Pam. She's very confident. Agreed. Pam rules. Great character. Very funny. Um, this episode, yeah, I'm glad they they started. I, was this the first time they start to introduce the Burt Reynolds stuff? I feel like, or was that, uh, or did they start to introduce it earlier? Um, oh, actually. Oh, you know what? I think it was in season one. I think it was in The Rock where he starts talking about Burt Reynolds when they're like heisting stuff. But uh, it all kind of, if I'm not mistaken, it it uh, it all comes back around, I think, in the next season, in season three or four. And like Burt Reynolds shows up <laughs> like Burt Reynolds That's is right. a character <laughs> in the show, which I'm very excited to get back That's to good. that stuff. I remember that. Um, but this is the one where he's obsessed with talking about Gator, the movie Gator <laughs> with Burt Reynolds, which is yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else? Should we move on to the double deuce? The double deuce. Pipeline fever is mid. That's a, that's mid? all I really have to say. Mm. I, I really like the Archer and Lana moments, but I don't think it's that funny of an episode, really. Mm. Word. And Archer, I usually watch for the laughs because usually it makes me laugh a lot. So. Right. For sure. All right. Well, let's move on to the double deuce. Um, this is the episode where Woodhouse becomes the target of an assassin because of the tontine with his World War One, World War One, right? World War One squad mm-hmm. mates. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, which is and how old is he? Like he's so old. Uh, he's got to be so World old. World War One. He's got to right. be like ninety <laughs> years old. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Um, I also though the funny thing is this is like very similar to. Um, the uh that simpsons episode with the really long title the rambling hellfish oh, oh, raging, <laughs> yeah, yeah. raging raging hellfish. simpson yeah. and his bumbling <laughs> grandson <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah that episode rules though <laughs> it is a great episode um but yeah. it's very similar where it's just like oh there there's like this this secret like this basically this uh this pact that yeah. these old dudes have from the war with this with the war squad mates and uh, mm-hmm. whoever survives till the end gets a big payout of some sort. And in The Simpsons, right. it was all of these priceless, uh, all of the priceless art that they stole from some Nazi castle. And uh, yeah. and in this one, it's a literal tontine. So they all. Oh just my get god! Yeah. Wait a minute! And they both end with gay jokes. I Do just realized both? that both episodes end with gay jokes because this one ends with like I can't believe they let y'all have a baby. Uh, that's right. Oh that's yeah. Right. yeah. And the Simpsons one has kind of even a it has a dumber ending. It's like the uh, it's like uh, Bart and uh, Abe hug, and Bart's like, I don't care who knows I love my grandpa. And then this guy like drives past and like rolls his window down. He's like, Hey, get a room! And then he just peels off. <laughs> really? Like, the- yeah. Like, I didn't even the- remember that. That's so- <laughs> how the episode ends. <laughs> so weird. Yeah, what stupid. a what a weird coincidence. What a um, really weird way to end. That's bizarre. Yeah, yeah and it is. It's a weird coincidence. I, just I um, thought about that. I really like this episode. I think the Double Deuce is a really this good episode. Yeah. Uh, I because I like Woodhouse, so like focusing on Woodhouse is fun to me. And also, like even though this premise is an old Simpsons premise, it's a good premise. It's like a lot of intrigue right. and suspense going on in this kind of premise. Um, and then also, I loved the flashbacks to World War One, and especially the animation when they show Woodhouse going and like going on his rampage and trying to save, oh, trying yeah. to save Reggie, and they do the like silhouette. And the on the moonlight, yeah, like the moonlight it's, it looks so good. It's some of the best animation we've seen in the show so far, for sure. It's really rad, yeah. Yeah, I uh, I really dug that, and I just thought, and I just like getting a good getting some history on Woodhouse. A good, I love Woodhouse. <laughs> He's a good. Yeah, character. I enjoy episodes episodes like this a lot because they add a lot of character backstory for multiple characters while also like maintaining action on the surface. So it's like right. very fast paced, but you're still learning a lot about some of the characters. Totally. I like uh speaking of the animation, I like the one thing that I was doing early in the episode was like I kept looking at the baby. Uh mm-hmm. the way they the way they animate how babies just kinda like get in this shit while you're having a conversation. I thought they did a really <laughs> good job at that. <laughs> like, yeah. He just I love, starts grabbing shit. Some of my favorite moments in the episode are like Archer making a joke at Woodhouse's expense and then the baby just making a noise and he's like right. yeah. <laughs> he's just like yeah, acting right? like the baby's agreeing with him. It's so funny. <laughs> That's like and it's actually like I mean like yeah Archer's not a good 
not a good dad it's by any means, but it's sweet. like it's kind of sweet and cute. Yeah. Like there's funny cute moments between the <laughs> yeah, two. Yeah, I, I like their sweet. relationship, even if it's like dysfunctional and, and yeah. very mm-hmm. goofy. Um, but seeing Mallory exhibit the same pattern she subjected Archer to, like on Seamus, like hurts. Like the way people are conditioned is usually used as a joke so far in this show. But Archer's like clearly traumatized as fuck, which we like already yep. got to see like a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then she's doing like negative reinforcement, give like has a million reasons to give a baby alcohol that are like healing. Like mm-hmm. she killed a man and drank right before she birthed Archer. And right. like mm-hmm. his mother like shot a gun and likely gave him tinnitus literally the night he was born, which is which right. is like a hilarious like sub detail that you'd have to think about for a second to find out but since there are so many tinnitus jokes in the show like you just and can't in stop season, thinking the, about it yeah yeah it's the fact that she like sh- probably shot a gun like right next to her baby's head is just really funny to me that's true yeah that, in a dark true. way that was the other thing that i really noticed about this episode is like is like this really goes a long way to show firsthand like the treatment that Archer likely had growing up is like <laughs> through through Mallory's time spent with the wee baby Seamus, which is uh, which is, yeah. you know, it's it's a bummer, but it's also yeah. <laughs> uh, right, it's yeah. telling. You learn a lot. You learn a lot about about these characters and their especially like the trauma that mm-hmm. Archer has endured through his relationship with his mother, which is very apparent also, in the show. But, you yeah. know, yeah. Also, apparently Woodhouse has to gaslight Archer three to four times a year to cover his tracks. Which <laughs> so, so, like, he's in that. on it with Mallory as as well. Yeah, um, and but the, yeah. The, he, he, <laughs> with, with, with Woodhouse, at least, though, you don't really feel bad because Archer just treats him like garbage so, so persistently. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're just kind of like, he's doing what he needs to do. <laughs> right, Woodhouse, yeah. yeah. But he's like so dependent on Woodhouse and super codependent with his mom. So yeah. like seeing a little bit of the, the background of that is always interesting. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love all of that that stuff with like uh, Mallory just kind of like tells Archer like, no, this is what happened. And like he did all of this for you and you treat him this way. And like, you mm-hmm. know, like seeing all of the, the flashback and everything like that. Like I, like I kind of was like I was because that's the thing, right? Is that like I had a. Um, I had like a stint while I like binged Archer in college, and I, I, and like so some of these are like they'll surface back in my memory while watching, and this is definitely one of them. And I forgot it, I, I forgot it was this early, but like I really appreciated all of that because it's just kind of um, I don't know, like it, it was really it was really sweet, and it made these characters feel a lot more real that way. Uh, mm-hmm. Just hearing all of that stuff. I, like I said, I, I love this episode. I love Woodhouse in general. And yeah, it's it is crazy. Was. I mean, like when it comes down to it, Woodhouse is the one who raised Archer, you know? Right. And uh, yeah. yeah. And so like, I feel like that it's like a background situation. It's like mostly in the background of the show, although they get into it a little bit more here. But like that's the reality is like his mom wasn't around and he was at boarding school a lot. And the rest of the time it was just Woodhouse. <laughs> Woodhouse was training. Yeah. Was just was just his his dad basically so you feel bad when archer uh treats him like garbage <laughs> All right oh poor woodhouse um and then he just kills his squad mate <laughs> at the end <laughs> who turns out yeah, yeah. it's not <laughs> yeah and he just like tosses the baby in the air <laughs> jump right. kicks yeah. the guy catches <laughs> the baby uh wild that was a pretty hardcore way to end the episode um all right. Any other thoughts about the double deuce before we move on? I wrote um, Woodhouse and Reggie. Historians will say they were roommates. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And that's another thing we should have talked about is like clearly Woodhouse. Clearly Woodhouse was in love with Reggie. But also maybe yeah. what, this other guy who who I can't remember his name, but the one who dies at the end, he like as he's falling to his death is like, I'm coming. To, I'm like coming. Or he's, yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah. I'll see you soon, Reggie. Reggie so like, yeah. and in the flashbacks, they show him like sort of having some sort of disdain for Reggie, but maybe that was some sort of like deeply rooted self-loathing. You think that's like a actual a feelings. That's like right. Helga from here. I don't think like it's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's like, that's uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's Canon, you know, Woodhouse was in love with Reggie. This poor, <laughs> like there's, I mean, yeah, like the moment before, uh, the moment before Reggie gets killed, they like, you, you think he's going to c- confess his love. Uh, and it feels almost like the episode was kind of playing it, 
for comedy, but like I'm wa- I watch yeah. you, know, you watch it now and you're just like this is sweet. Like oh, they were so close to <laughs> so close to confessing their love for one another. Uh, poor Reggie, poor Reggie, poor Woodhouse. Yeah. Uh, you guys got anything else? Um, no. All right. Tragical history. Uh, this episode is the one where Cyril tries to get the agency to stop to looking down on him by injecting a pirate virus into the ISIS mainframe so that he can then stop it himself. Uh, and I love, I love the little pirate. Love him. <laughs> hum, hum. What does he say? Like, hush, hush. <laughs> What what? <laughs> it's, the way they just kept playing it, and everyone got like, it got stuck in everyone's head is really funny to me. Um, but my favorite part about this episode is there's a really good guest star. I really like the guy who plays I can't remember his name George Spelvin or something like that. I think that's it. Uh, Spelvin, yeah, uh, is played by an actor I love named Peter Serafinowicz. We talked about him on some other episodes. He was on a Rick and Morty episode as well for season three. Um, Great voice actor, very funny comedian, uh, but I really, I really like his voice, and I really like, I really like that plan. I like his plan to like undermine uh, the ISIS agency. Also, I liked his fake plan and his real plan. <laughs> which, like, <laughs> his fake plan was to uh, make it look like ISIS got hacked, so that all of these other agencies would upgrade his pirate his like anti-hacking software his his protection software uh but then his real plan was obviously just to steal all of their information and sell it uh but i like that he knew to go through cyril and attack cyril's insecurities to get through into isis yep. yeah one of uh, my notes just says cyril is a dumbass <laughs> mm-hmm. he sure is he yeah. sure is also that peter guy is um the, he plays the tick in the in the he Amazon sure version of the tick, yeah. which is a great show. It's a great show. That show has two of my favorite people in it, which is uh, which is Peter Serafin, which is the tick, and then the guy who plays Arthur is a guy named Griffin Newman who hosts uh, a podcast I love called um, Blank Check with Griffin and David, which frankly is a podcast. Uh, that I stole their format from for this podcast, which is to do mini series about uh, things. So. Well, I, I, I didn't know anything about this people. So uh. Uh, it's, a, it's a great podcast, though. Um, and like, yeah, I mean, really, it's just just the idea of mini series. They cover movies and they talk about filmmakers filmographies. So they go through a filmmakers filmography one movie at a time. So I just stole the mini series format of being like, let's do a season of one show for this many months. Um, and that's uh and that's, you know, that's and that's I just thought it was a perfect is a perfect way to do a podcast. So uh, why why mess with perfection? So here we are doing it a little I worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to have a little a little rain before there could be a little sunshine. You know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, but yeah, love those actors. Sarah Finowich is really, really good in this. I, I mean, I just love his voice so much. He's got a great voice. Um, he does. Yeah, really good voice. I think he comes back later in the show as other characters. Um, not entirely sure on that, but uh, yeah. And then I oh, there's some really good. This one also has some good Pam stuff, right? Is this the one where they Pam starts talking about about fitting pool balls in her mouth? Is that this one? <laughs> I think so. I thought that was later. She, she brings it up like three times in a season, though. So I it could have started here. <laughs> I think it starts here because they're at the bar at the beginning, and Cyril messes up the okay. C- Cyril messes up the the darts. They're gonna oh, win darts because right. Archer gets three bullseyes okay. in a row, and the Archer and then and then Cyril misses everything on the board, and I think Archer is goes with pam to be like i, I do want to see how many pool balls you can fit in your mouth it's like my record is three right. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's pretty it's oh, like even just think, thinking thinking about it that was like kind of grossed me out but <laughs> pool ball is the season is the season finale is that where she like opens the bathroom door crying yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> i watched yeah. that one today yeah yep <laughs> yep uh <laughs> Um, oh, I have in my notes in all caps, Lana killed baby girl. Uh, I was trying to remember what that was about, but it's actually about uh, Buddy's digital girlfriend. Lana, like, <laughs> busts up the, uh, <laughs> the machine. Right. I yeah. forgot about that. Uh, poor Krieger. Poor Krieger and his, yeah. weird, and his weird anime girlfriend. <laughs> his weird computer anime girlfriend. And which is, um, like... 
I, they uh, just got done I really talking like about uh, how like she's real enough for them to legally get married, and then Lana like yeah. murders her. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's messed up. It's real sad. Yeah. Their interactions are funny. I love in a later episode when he's like, we'll talk about it in the van. Yeah, like, we'll talk yeah. about it in the van. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, um, I really like the climax when they go to Spelvin's place and they're like, and and like the two the like two women he's with have have samurai swords and he's got a samurai sword and Arch is just like and then they can give I, can I have one that's super funny to me that was um, great also it's like very Archer to just while he's fighting these women to still be hitting on them <laughs> like yeah it's like oh that's that sound that sounds about right for Archer <laughs> and even he's even convinced. Like while they're still fighting, he's like, "I think I'm winning them over." <laughs> like even though they're trying to <laughs> kill him, am I picking really... up the right vibes? <laughs> while he's got like those, I forget what they're called. One of the oh yeah, Ninja whatever Turtles whatever Raphael them. uses in the in the Ninja yeah. Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's just his arms are held up by that. Yeah, uh, that was funny. Um, and then this one has the this one has the running joke of just the. Uh, uh, do you not? <laughs> I, I wrote, you. That's the other thing I wrote down too. And the way that they ended the episode, and he he wants to go take a bath in one yeah. of those cool ass Japanese soaking tubs, and Cyril's like, "What?" You take He's a like, bath "Do right you now? not?" And then yeah. they end it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that so was my. Good. I love when Archer does callbacks. It's like one of my favorite things about the show, and that one killed me at the yeah. end of the episode. It was funny because that was one where like usually they usually they catch me by surprise, but that was one that right before he said it, because there's the long the pause, which Archer is known for like the really good <laughs> long comedic pause. And right before he said yeah. it, I was like, do you not? I was like, I knew he was gonna do a do you not. <laughs> it, was, it was perfect. I uh I love it. I love that bit. Uh you guys got any other thoughts on tragical history? I just wrote this one was good. That was this one summary. is good. Yeah. yeah. It's a pretty good it. one. Yeah, agreed. Um, all right, let's go on to Movie Star, which is a good premise. This is the one where uh, Hollywood actress Rona Thorne shadows Lana for an upcoming role with the big twist at the end being that she's actually a real double agent or a, or a se- mm-hmm. sleeper agent, not a double agent, a yeah, sleeper, sleeper agent, um, which is a cool, <laughs> which is a funny premise. I, I like the idea that her. <laughs> her parents were like these Russian sleeper agents and she was just fitting in for her whole life in Hollywood. And that led to a successful Hollywood career. Like she became a movie star through it. Uh, But also this episode is very like the whole premise is very Mallory to, to be like, I'm going to sacrifice the integrity of my agency so that I can make some money from the movie studios. (laughs) Like that's very Mallory. Uh, You guys got any thoughts on movie star? Um, Lana gives Archer tinnitus again, Mm -hmm. so they continue the joke. I tried to write it down every time that happened. Um, and then my favorite line, uh, is when Cyril and Mallory are like writing that script, I think. And Mm -hmm. Cyril goes, there's a finite supply of Vaseline in the universe. And then she just smacks him. (laughs) (laughs) One of my favorite lines is in that Uh, area too, where, uh, is he says like, I was like, yeah, well, what they got going on is way more interesting and Granny gets jungle fever, which is like, <laughs> right in the that's yeah. so funny. <laughs> Granny gets jungle fever. Uh, and then I also like that they turn, that the script, they go to pitch it to him and then initially the Hollywood agent is just like, what the hell is this? We're not doing this. What, like, you, you guys just wrote Mandingo. Wait a second. <laughs> and then like, does anyone have the right Mandingo? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say the title was? And he and the crazy thing, craziest thing is he had this title off the top of his head. He was like, "We're gonna call it Mandingo Two: The Enslavening," which is just a title that he just he just had in the chamber. That's so fucked up. <laughs> oh man, that's a really funny subplot. Cyril and Mallory writing a writing a screenplay. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, yeah. it's hilarious. Um, I uh, I also like that this is an episode where just like it ends with Archer and Lana just failing. Like, like the movie yeah. star yeah. gets away. Rona just gets away and is like yeah. the winner of that situation. Um, 
She like literally achieves her goal. They fail in their in their mission, and then she leaves and she gets away. And right. uh, and then she's got the running thing of just calling everything amazing. <laughs> so they oh end here, yeah. and they just get so annoyed at her. Yeah, Every body and he's like, just don't, don't, don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny, and it's funny. It's a funny moment when Archer swoops in to save the day and immediately gets injected with yeah. that stuff and he just like immediately <laughs> fails yeah it's like didn't he see lana get injected too like he totally right. could have had the foresight but he was too busy like focusing on making a cool entrance right very archer <laughs> i uh, was genuinely surprised by her being a sleeper agent though like i didn't remember that at all i didn't either. really know where the episode was gonna go i remembered it but i remember being surprised by it when i saw it the first time <laughs> <laughs> so yeah okay. it's a good it's a good twist because it like it's like yeah it's uh it's almost a double twist like but it's uh it's funny it's funny is she i think i i wonder if they ever brought her back i don't know if they ever brought that character back hmm. but um it feels like a character you could easily bring back um yeah because she got away they do that a lot like in season one they conway stern gets away and then like i feel like they didn't bring him back yeah, for yeah. years yeah i was gonna um, i was gonna uh i was actually thinking about that the whole season i was like uh so yeah so they're really not gonna bring conway back like i was because you know what i was thinking about because like you know just the fact that this was like a fx cartoon like there wasn't really a blueprint that would let them know that this was going to run for a long time. So mm-hmm. I would have felt like they would have tried to like, okay, we planted this Conway seed. Let's at least throw him somewhere in this season. Just cause we don't know if this will be our last one or not. Right. But now they let that nuts hang, man. He doesn't come back for a while. Yeah. And- it's, I think it's not like season <laughs> seven or something. And it's, it's, right. but it's especially noticeable with that character because as he leaves in that episode, he says, you haven't seen the last of Conway Stern. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm thinking. I'm like, okay, so you're really not, you guys just know you're going to be back for a couple of years. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah it's pretty I funny. Know. I mean, it's crazy that the show is still on. And now the new season starts within like in a week or, or in a the few 26. weeks. The 26. Yeah. So three I weeks only know now. that because I watched. Because you're watching whole Archer and they have ads on it. On yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. Um, which, which will be sadly the, the final season. I believe they've, they've got, uh, they've got, um, What's her name? Uh, Jessica Walters recorded for this final season, so okay. she'll be in it, which is nice. We'll get uh, we'll get at least one more season of of Mallory before we'll see. And who knows? Who knows how they'll deal with uh, deal with that? Or if this is the last season? I don't know. I have no idea what right, their plans yeah. are. It's twelve season twelve, I think, which is crazy. This is season twelve coming. That's up. a lot of seasons. It's wild. It's wild. But it it makes me sad when I think about her. Yeah, yeah, she was so, so good. But she also had just like, she had a good long life and career. So, but yeah, right. I, I get it. It's a bummer. It kind of reminds me of, uh, I feel like we might have talked about this before, but it kind of reminds me of when uh, Marshall Wallace passed away. Uh, oh, yeah. Edna Krabappel from the Simpsons. Yeah. And it was just kind of like, fuck. Like, it, Edna's so important and integral to like the show, just like how mallory is even mallory even more so so like yeah 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 with the simpsons there's so many characters at least that you can like really and absolutely like, Rabapa was a big part of it especially early on because it was so bart focused but you know you understand but, how they can get by without her after that but the thing with- about Krabappel is that like unlike a lot of other uh side characters like they never let Krabappel go anywhere. Like, she kind of is always around in some way, shape, or form. And they just figured out a way to make her be around more right before With she Flanders. Passed. Right. Yeah. So that's why I think it it, yeah, it, it, it it sucks even more because they were playing with so many new dynamics her relationship with ned her relationship with ned's two boys the fact that she lives next to bart like all of this stuff they were just starting to like really play with and then you know she passed away it's really yeah she was a great actress did you guys ever watch a slight uh slight tangent did you guys ever watch the show which was created by the guys who did south park Stone and trey parker uh that's my bush you ever see that show no that's my bush is a show that came out in the year 2000 and it was a sitcom uh, starring George W. Bush 
And it was they got a guy named Timothy Bottoms to, who looks just like George W. Bush to play George Bush. And Mar- Marsha Wallace was like the White House like maid in that show. And she was really <laughs> funny in it. But the premise of that show was basically, what if we put the literal president in all of the most stereotypical sitcom situations? Like, okay. <laughs> like the stupidest, worst, like the opening, um, the opening... <laughs> Uh, the first episode is an episode where he accidentally schedules an important like summit between like pro-choice and pro-life movements on the same night as he's supposed to have dinner with with his with his wife and so he's running between areas in the white house to try and do this like important this important dinner and have dinner with his wife it's such a dumb show and it only lasted one year but but it was a crazy show because they originally were convinced this is a running theme in in this South Park creators' lives, convinced Al Gore was going to win. So they had a whole show prepped called Absolutely Al and that they were going to make. And then Jeez. George W. Bush won and they had to change it to, to That's My Bush. <laughs> oh my uh, God. It's rough. It's such a weird thing that that show exists. Weird show. <laughs> but um, <laughs> all right. Well, anything else about Movie Star after our couple little tangents there? Nah, man. All right, let's move on to the first two-part episode of the whole show, I believe. Um, the beginning, this the first one is called Stage 2. Archer finds out that he has stage 2 breast cancer. Uh, this two-part, I like. I love both of these two-part episodes. Um, mm-hmm. The second one I love, though, but this one's good, too. Um, I really like, A, I just like the, like, the twist that, like it starts off, it's kind of a bait and switch where you're like, oh no, Mallory might be sick. She yeah. thinks she has breast cancer. And then even they even reveal that she's fine right before you're like, oh, Archer has breast cancer. <laughs> like Archer. He moves the thing in yeah. his hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, it's a, it's an interesting reveal. It's also like a, it's like an unexpected plot line. And I think it, um, and also like weirdly is a, I think it's an interesting plot line to give Archer, like to challenge Archer in this way. Because right. he's just so like so good at getting out of everything, even though he's the worst. Mm-hmm. So like to to like face him with his own actual mortality after he's like narrowly escaped death <laughs> so many times is really interesting to me. Um, yeah, what do you guys think about stage two? So I wrote precursor to the best episode of Archer, and therefore a great episode of Archer. <laughs> nice, love it. That's so man. So this is the one that I love. And the next one is the one that I like. Mm. I love this one. <laughs> Interesting. I um, love the next one. I like this one. Yeah. I so, love them both. <laughs> yeah. I My favorite parts about this one are like, I my favorite comedic aspects of this one are him and Seamus again, even though we maybe Seamus. The matching the tattoos. tattoos <laughs> which is not, which is honestly also so funny because just like you see, you see Archer shirtless so much over the course of the show. And he's always, he's always got that tattoo. So it's always a reminder of like the season two thing where he got this baby's name tattooed on his shoulder. It's really good. <laughs> oh, it's so good. All right. Why, uh, Tariq, why do you love this one? Uh, I love it because of what it what it uh I guess I love it because of all the character stuff. I love it because of um the conversation that Archer and Mallory have where like I don't know if they were trying to play it for a joke, but it didn't come off as a joke to me. Where like they barely say anything, but then they both go like it's kind of rough opening up. Like I yeah. don't know, it felt so real. Like I like I was watching yeah. that and I was like, "Wow." <laughs> like I really um and they do stuff like that a lot in this one. They like uh, the stuff with Archer and uh, Lana, and like all of that stuff. Like, I'm, and when he comes to uh, when he comes back to work, and he's like giving everybody flowers and shit. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I felt like all of that stuff was like really interesting from like a, a a character point of view. And I think that might be why I love this one because, like, I guess because the next because the next one is funny it's a funny one but this one is like a, a human one and i think that might be why i love this one a lot and the also it's very it, human too it is though but yeah i think like for, i think possibly for different reasons um it is definitely right yeah i agree that is that's definitely this one's like strong point is all of the interpersonal relationships that archer has and how uh-huh. they're tested because of his like his his now like brush with his mortality 
Um, there's good stuff with him and Lana. There's good stuff with him and Mallory. And then like with the whole office as a whole. I, yeah, that's, that is really good. Yeah. And they, they do the, which I don't even know how the hell I forgot that this was a thing that they did, but, uh, the, uh, the doctor keeps calling at the end. Oh that my shit god! Is rough. That's so funny. That shit that is roller rough. coaster. <laughs> that shit and, then, is rough. and then the last time he calls, like the, everyone's shocked face, staring at Mallory when she picks up the phone to like talk to the doctor about getting drinks, <laughs> and she's like, "Too soon." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved, I loved how how far they went with that joke where he kept calling back yeah. and messing up, and uh, and not only did he call back like the third time, but the first call is like that nurse who <laughs> who's calling Archer yeah. separately and then he gets the call while he's on that call. So they like they really push that to its absolute limit with how far they could take they that joke. Uh but it worked. It's really funny. It's a really funny bit. Yeah. Um uh, yeah, that is a it is a it's a good episode. It's a really good episode. It's it's up there on my list. Me too. Um, I have another deranged Cheryl quote. Um that when they're like just waiting in the waiting room at the hospital and she's like, I want to be here in case he dies. <laughs> <laughs> how much cancer, like, Come on. how much cancer is in him? What was it? How much cancer does he have? What was it? it was some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, was, she was waiting she's, too long. <laughs> she is totally just bonkers character. What a, what an awful, <laughs> awful deranged person. Uh, it's awful. That's so funny. All right, should we move on to placebo effect though, and talk about maybe may hash out our how why Keeks and I maybe like it more than the last one? Yeah, let's fight. This yeah, is the whole reason it. I chose this season to talk about with you Hell guys. Yeah. Well, then start it off. Why don't you talk about it? Um, I think this is the best episode of Archer and one of my favorite pieces of television, basically ever. Um, I, I see like I spent the whole episode just like laughing the entire time. So my notes are like really short lines of yeah. text because I was just too busy, like screaming. Um, but I just I love the way that it that it builds and you think he's just going to keep being violent the entire episode. And then um, he like starts chemo in the middle of it and then just like totally gets taken down by his own confidence. Right. And then like the reveal at the end of like him filming the entire thing and that the entire time, like, like, or at least in the last part of the episode, like they've been watching the film mm-hmm. and like he just starts <laughs> replaying it over and over again in terms of an rampagement. <laughs> There's nothing that I dislike about this episode. Anytime I would like show my friends Archer when I was younger, I would always choose this episode to watch. It's probably the one that I've seen the most and it makes me laugh till I cry like every time. Right. I and the last line is Casa Blumpkin of the Casa entire episode. It's just that's Cheryl right. saying Casa Blumpkin. Oh, wait, that's something that keeps happening in these two episodes that Cheryl doesn't know what cancer is. Right. <laughs> yeah, <she's, laughs> so what's seriously, cancer? what is cancer? Um, yeah, Cheryl is, which we kind of learn why she's like, doesn't understand the world soon, <laughs> actually, in the next episode. Mm-hmm. But um, I agree for all the reasons you just said, Keeks, but also like, so to me, this episode is so good, A, because the premise is so is so interesting. It's like per- Archer's personal vendetta because the because the cancer drugs he's taking are fake. And then and then the whole idea of him in the middle of his mission slash rampage to start taking his chemotherapy like and then and then how that affects him, his character is just like kind of a genius premise. Like, I can't think of any other show that would even think to do something like that. But the stakes are really serious. Like, this is a yes. really bad crime. He's got like Ruth motivating him and you yes. see like his memories mm-hmm. with her throughout the whole thing. That's what <laughs> I that's what I love about the episode is because even though like Archer is generally a selfish person and you could very much read this episode is just like he didn't get his cancer drugs so he's going on a rampage but the way they frame it through all of his flashbacks is that the whole time he's really thinking about Ruth and he's really thinking about how Ruth died and never got her proper treatment and so like he's thinking so he's like to me the rampage is fueled by that connection he had with this person and how like that person was done dirty because of these, because of these people. And to me, that's like why he goes off the rails. It's not his own. It's not himself. Like once he gets what he gets his drugs and he's fine. He keeps going after the guy at the top because Mm -hmm. he's like, it's like a revenge. It's revenge for his friend who he lost through this. 
who didn't get it, the treatment she deserved. Yeah. And the last line of Terms of Enrampagement is, hey, did you catch Regis this morning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he asks about Regis and then he just turns and boom. Uh, it's great. <laughs> yeah. I love this episode. I love, and also I just think it is one of the funniest. Like it's so funny. The, t- it's the so movie, funny. the movie name Terms of a Rampagement is so stupid. <laughs> and the fact that they just like, even, even the first time he says it, he's like, no, I'll think of something better, but he never does. He just keeps going with Terms of a <laughs> Rampagement the whole time. That's so funny to me. Um, yeah, this is, this is definitely one of my, one of my favorites of the whole show. Uh, and and I also just like I think like the way they frame the flashbacks with Ruth are really nice. Like him just getting stoned yeah. with Ruth, and they just have like this. It's like a nice subversive, unexpected little relationship that he formed with someone, uh, and he doesn't even talk to anyone about it. It's just through his memories that we see it. You know, he doesn't. Yeah, you know. nobody else knows about Ruth really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and he keeps like having these flashbacks, and then Lana's like Archer, and he and they're like in like a really tense situation, yeah. and he's just like spacing out, thinking about her. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of layers to the episode <laughs> yeah. i love when archer's like i'm just here to fuck a candy striper <laughs> to, her, like, <laughs> to, to ruth i don't know they're great um there are three quotes that i wrote down for this episode that i love the first one is when archer and i think they're like driving and maybe they're like smoking or something and they're like about to go fight and Archer just looks at Lana. He's like, Lana, did you see my scarf? And he just says it like so earnestly <laughs> as if like she hasn't been sitting next to him like the entire time, like going on this rampage with him. Just, I don't know, him saying, Lana, did you see my scarf? Killed me. Um, the way that like Lana realized, oh, we talked about this earlier, but the way that Lana realizes that like she's been hot boxed the entire <laughs> yes. episode and then she's just sitting on the car and she's like, do you guys have snacks? And then, like, <laughs> two minutes later, Ar- Archer's like, oh my God, do you guys have snacks? Um, and then at the end of the episode, when Mallory's like, I liked him better when he had cancer and Archer's just like, what the shit? <laughs> <Mother."> <laughs> Um, those are great. Oh, those are those, great. I was gonna bring up the the Lana hotbox moment too. I love that moment when she just like it's like the sudden realization that she's high. <laughs> she's like, oh <laughs> damn it! <laughs> um, but also, she I just goes re- from mad to immediately wanting snacks. <laughs> I also just remembered a quote from the last episode that I really wanted to bring up that I love, and it's when. Uh, And it's like, they told me that I can't eat or drink anything until like before or after this amount of time. And she's like, alcohol? He goes, uh, the stuff they use to sterilize hospitals? Yeah, I think it's going to be okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's such a good joke. It's so stupid. Oh, my God. Oh, man. All right. Any other thoughts on uh, placebo effect or stage two before we move on? Um, Archer calls Lana his friend at one point when they're like doing stuff. He's like, don't talk about my friend that way or like making like a homophobic joke about my friend or something. And that like little moment was just like sweet to me. Like, and Mm. also just the fact that Lana was like a ride or die for this entire rampage. Yes. Like even regardless of like anything they've been through, like she's totally down to just like go kill people for cancer reasons with totally. him, and I think that's pretty awesome. And I Is feel like when it's, he, uh... it's him and it's, I feel like it's her her relationship with Archer that's like leading her to to do that for him. You know what I mean? Is like, yeah. like especially like you kind of see their connection then they reconnect over the cancer a little bit. And so like, yeah, totally. Yeah, she's like she's willing to do this for him in this scenario, which is nice. It's yeah, it's good. Um, the only other thing I wrote down is a, a random um, detail, but the chair in Mallory's office, I think it's called an Eames chair, but it's like a really expensive like designer chair. So the fact that they just put that like in her office as a detail, <laughs> I thought was really cool. <laughs> the, the All of the background stuff and like we talked about this in the last episode, but the show is so interesting because it's just it's not set in any real time period. Like it exi- it clearly exists somewhat in modern day because they're able to watch videos online and like they talk about uh, like modern Hollywood, but all of their all of their like the sets or like the sets, all of the like computers and the like backgrounds. It's all mm-hmm. like old timey. The cars yeah, they drive. The computers are really right. retro. Yeah, yeah they're, they're like out of yeah. they're like out of the seventies. It's crazy. Um, I was wondering if they designed the computers that way so that they wouldn't be like representing any like brand of computer or something. But I feel like you could also just like draw a monitor. So it's definitely a stylistic choice. Yeah, I think it's a stylistic choice to like not really have this set in any 
real in any real sense of like reality. You know what I mean? It's like it's set in modern day, but it's set in this like weird alternate world where both the technology looks like this and like the KGB still exists and like all of that stuff. We talked we talked about that in the last one. But um, yeah, it's like there's a lot of a uh, lot of uh, a lot of weird stuff like that. But it's cool. I guess cell phones kind of look like chocolate bars in Archer. Like if you guys remember that right. style of phone. So that might that might be the only thing dating it. It's like the only modern thing in a show that looks very right. 1960s. But not smartphones. They never upgrade. I bet mm. I doubt they ever sm- upgrade to smartphones. Yeah, it's interesting. Interesting. All right. Should we move on to El Sequestro? Yeah. Let's do it. This is the episode where Pam is kidnapped. Uh, because she is very pointedly mistaken for Cheryl, who we learn is loaded. <laughs> and, a tunt. Yes, she's a tunt. <laughs> and she is also uh, b- f- more deranged in this episode for multiple reasons. One, because she starts yelling that Pam is Cheryl as she's getting kidnapped so that she doesn't get yeah. kidnapped. Um, and, be, and, and two, that she... Does not go to her parents' funeral because she thinks she's going to get in trouble at work. And then she's like joking about she's like her parents getting murdered, but she's like, right. no, they didn't get murdered. They were they were just killed some other way. <laughs> like they got like the, they got killed a different way. Um, <laughs> yeah, Cheryl is uh, Cheryl's quite a character. <laughs> I don't I don't know how else to describe her. She's uh, deranged. But this is the first step. This is the one where you really start to see like oh, Pam, Cheryl is insane and pam is a badass <laughs> pam is right, especially yeah. the like the the scenes where they're like interrogating her and punching her in the face <laughs> it's like you're just gonna have to right, kill right, right. me <laughs> she's well yeah because mallory only offered like five thousand dollars or something yeah. for pam yeah and then pam yeah, like sucks. Pa- and then pam at the end like <laughs> they end with pam like about to to like beat the shit out of Mallory. <laughs> That's yeah. the episode just ends. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Is this the reveal of her back tattoo, or do you see that earlier in the show? It might that might have that might have been it because I I do remember her like hmm. seeing her back and being like shocked by right. the back tattoo. Yeah, um, I think this one's really fun. I. I really like the like what learning about Cheryl and her life. Like I like yeah. this, I love I love all the ocelot stuff. Like Archer being so stoked yeah, to meet yeah. the ocelot. <laughs> I, I did write down Archer is so sympathetic to the ocelot. Like he's the <laughs> only one who cares yeah. about this cat, and he's like making. I think like Cheryl gets kidnapped by Cyril, and Archer's like, "Well, now you know how the cat feels," and he's just like super <laughs> on the cat side the entire time, which would definitely be me in that situation. Right. Um, total cat person but yeah the, i i loved that detail about archer he's he seems to like animals i think that's yeah cool. <laughs> and he's and i think um, they i think they bring the ocelot back in season three and i think i remember for that the tra- for the train <laughs> episodes there's some nice some good train yes ep- yeah. oh my god the train yeah, um the train. but yeah i forgot i didn't already know cheryl was super rich because like I, it's just interesting watching these early seasons with all of the archer knowledge that's in my brain from being a fan for so long so yeah, I just I I like the whole time they're like, oh yeah, that's Cheryl Tunt, and then they're like, oh, that's actually that's actually my last name, not whatever she put on her W four. Yeah, I can't remember what she put. Something funny. It was like Mick something. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's like McGurk or something silly. Yeah. <laughs> McGurk, who's also a another John Benjamin character. Ooh. <laughs> um, Tariq, Tariq, what do you think? Yeah. You got any thoughts on this one? Uh, yeah, I'll. I'll uh... I like this one a lot. Um, I wrote my first note for it says I didn't realize I wasn't taking notes <laughs> because like I was I was just kind of enjoying the episode the whole time. Right. Um, they do uh, one of the running bits in this one that like it, it kills me because it just gets worse and worse is like they keep making Brett answer the damn phone, but he's shot and he doesn't move. <laughs> <laughs> and Brett has to keep picking the phone up every time the phone rings. And like they get like more and more pissed the longer it takes. They're like, Brett, like, go on, man. Damn. Like, answer the phone. <laughs> right. um, yeah. And this one uh, reminded me, we talked about this uh, a little bit before, but just like, how you know how like the show ends on like 
every episode ends with just like one final punch and they've all been killer this this whole season like all, yeah. all of those final punches have been really really good and this one this one the the last the final punch in this one is just Lana saying nope but for some <laughs> reason it it's it's kill, like it kills me like it's so good <laughs> yeah it's, and I, it's funny when they do them on callbacks because like it's like almost a double mm-hmm. thing where it's like it's it's one you don't expect a callback and two you don't expect it to be the final beat um right and so many episodes end without a real resolution they just end they end in the middle of the action and that's why it's always like a good surprise that the episode ends. right yeah which i think i think is like because okay wow this is the second iCarly tangent but they they used <laughs> to do this on iCarly uh they were like at a certain point in the show's run episodes stop having actual endings and like they'll just end where they get tired, and like, and, but that's the thing though, right? Is I feel like they're trying to do the Archer thing, and they're trying to end it on like a really weird spot where it's like, wait, well, what about this and what about that? And it like, the fact that you keep questioning stuff is supposed to be the joke, and right. it's supposed to make you laugh more. It's supposed to make you laugh through the credits. What I think Archer does better than I Carly did is, is that it, it like ends really strong on like a final beat. Well, I Carly would just end like with i don't know they like walk out of a room and then just leave the situation hanging kind of thing where it's like yeah that can be funny but it's not like this this is like a this is like a final punch it's like a final blow uh to the stomach and they just kind of yada yada a bunch of stuff uh yeah i think the show's really good at that and i think they found a great way to get that across without feeling like you cheated anything uh, from the story or anything like that. There isn't a single episode from like the season that I walked away from. Like, why the fuck didn't they talk about that? Why didn't they do that? Why didn't they talk about that? You right. know what I mean? Like, I didn't, I didn't care because I was laughing. Yeah, <laughs> so it didn't matter. Exactly. Yeah, it's, you especially don't care when there's a good laugh at the end. <laughs> right. And I feel like I'm, I'm eager to watch through. I remember because I, I, I rem- always remember season one and two being like so good on those final punchy jokes and i remember in season three feeling like they didn't land quite as solidly as seasons one or two but i don't know maybe uh mm-hmm. maybe i'll go back to season three and and feel differently about that because that was how i felt about it you know 10 years ago when season three came right. out you know it's been <laughs> yeah. so long since i've watched it uh but i'm eager to see if they're like able to maintain maintain that um but yeah it's uh it's a good one. This is a good wild episode. Good and really good character building episode for both Cheryl and Pam, which I feel like is uh, they just both become more fun and ridiculous characters as the show goes on. Nah, absolutely. All right. You guys have any thoughts on that one? Should we move on? Let's does anyone see. does anyone know French? Because I don't know how to pronounce this word. OK, mm. I looked up how to pronounce this. It's appara- I'm, I'm going to try. I don't speak French. Je Monegasque. All right, that's what we're going with. This is the one when the ISIS agents all go to Monte Carlo to stop one of Mallory's sex tapes from being released again. And then Archer uh, gambles away their 401ks, <laughs> which, which is wild. Uh, wild that Mallory would even put that in play. Um, yeah. But it is funny. I like this one, how they like, I really like how they talk about all of Archer's vices and the whole time they're just like, but he doesn't gamble like gambling's like he does. He's never gambled before. That's one thing he doesn't have. And then you see how quickly someone can get like can can become addicted to gambling because he, he loses 50 grand on accident. And then he's like, right. and then he immediately makes it back and could just step away and be like, all right, we did it. But he just just threw those two hands. He becomes <laughs> addicted to gambling and loses everything, yeah. <laughs> loses almost everything. Um, and then they tell you the reason he doesn't gamble, which is the only note I wrote for this episode, which is that like Mallory and Archer were like gambling for Halloween candy. And then she like took all of Archer's candy in some type of gambling situation. And then like chastised him for not being able to hold down alcohol as a child. Like that was just a Jeez. random flashback. Oh, they threw in there. Mallory. What a good mom. Great parenting. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, I, this is another one where I really like the setting. I think setting it at the, that race is really cool. And it, it's, uh, and yeah, it's just like a cool different, vibe to it in this episode um and then benoit is very funny ben benoit balls <laughs> uh and i know uh 
yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a fun, fun recurring gag because even when like, even when the name is just being spoken later, referring to him, Archer can't stop himself from saying balls. <laughs> after <laughs> years, Benoit, Benoit. Yeah. Uh, and I know our producer Mikey is a big fan of the Benoit balls running gag. <laughs> Mikey, you want to jump in talk about balls? He raised his hand. There's a few <laughs> shot here where you can raise your hand. He just rose his hand. I watched his little thing jump up and down. Excuse me, I'd like to talk about Benoit. Please. Balls. Excuse me, did somebody <laughs> say floor, Benoit sir. balls? <laughs> somebody put up the Benoit balls signal. Um, so I, I have kind of an interesting story about this Benoit balls thing. <laughs> so I'll I didn't you. know what Benoit balls were until this episode, uh, which is pretty common in Archer. They have a lot of jokes where I was like, I have no idea what that is. And now I'm going to learn about it. Um, so when I was a, a senior in high school, uh, my English teacher wrote me a really nice college rec. And so you generally want to get someone, uh, get a teacher a gift, you know, when they do that for you. And he was like very into like Asian culture, maybe appropriating it a little bit. He was very like Buddhist and Zen. So I went to this Asian treasures store and got these little metal weighted balls in this nice case. I didn't really know what they were, um, but I was like, he's going to be into this. Uh, and then oh later God. on, a oh couple years later, this episode comes out. And I learned about Benoit balls, which are these, these Chinese like weighted balls that you put into your, vagina to strengthen your vaginal muscles or to simply achieve pleasure. Um, so I think there's an above zero chance that I gave my teacher Ben Wobbles. <laughs> above zero chance. Cause there's also, there's oh like, there's like these like Chinese, like stress balls that you just like have in your hands. And I think that's what it was, mm. but it could have been Ben Wobbles. It could have been Ben Wobbles. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I like, yeah, I think, I think it might have, you know what I mean? Yeah. This was That's so funny. 100% a tangent worth going on. Right. Yeah. It's, it's related. related. <laughs> it's related. Glad you raised the hand. Uh, oh while I'm here, God. though, I'll let you guys get back to this episode, but can I uh, mention a few of my favorite jokes that you guys uh, yeah, do it. glossed Absolutely. over? Okay, Mikey's, just, a big, a... Mikey's a big archer guy. <laughs> they might know um, that by now. I mean, yeah, I was... I was yeah, on, on a whole episode. Sure. <laughs> um, okay, in Double Deuce, right before Reggie is killed, one of my favorite lines that I will repeat to this day: uh, Woodhouse offers him water, and he says, "Never touch this stuff. Fish fucking it." Most <laughs> 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 absurd thing to say about water. <laughs> and also, the end of the cold open in stage two after. Mallory reveals that she might have breast cancer and then Lana's tone changes like, oh, Mallory, I'm so sorry. And then Pam just goes, so is that why you're being such a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good Pam moment. I love that. <laughs> Some so of my funny. favorite uh, archers. And then also in this episode, you did mention the flashbacks to when Archer's getting drunk. I love that he's dressed as Charlie Chaplin and both times they come out of the flashbacks. Like first, Archer's like, why, why like was Hitler. I dressed like Hitler? Yeah. And then <laughs> like, why was he dressed like Hitler? Oh my god, <laughs> that's so funny. Um, was this okay? Now, speaking of Hitler, which episode is uh, the one where we were learn that Krieger might be? <laughs> A, a genetic clone you know, of Hitler. I think that's placebo effect. I think okay. that's just like a, a side plot and placebo effect. Right. <laughs> that is a wild thing to yes. just throw in and not really. Yes, it is. Not really go deeper into in that episode. It's pretty funny. <laughs> oh, man. Um, good. Good jokes. Good tangent, Mikey. Thanks. Um, he waved. <laughs> uh do you guys have anything else on this episode before? Uh, I don't know if we can top Benoit balls. <laughs> that, uh, that a cool no, I don't think we can. The uh, racing right. looks great. The racing looks great. Uh, it does. The, it looks. It looks great. And it's cool. Like a cool, fun action sequence while they're like fighting during the racing. That's really cool. Yeah, some some fast, some fast and furious shit. Yeah, uh, exactly. Literally. And uh, uh, it just turns into speed racer at a certain point. Like they do the music. Like it, it, right. it literally does just kind of turn into speed racer at a certain point. 
And I remember catching it like, what the hell are they doing? (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, let's move on to the two part finale, which are two separate episodes, but two part finale, we'll call it Um, White Knights. This is the one where Archer is searching for his father's identity uh, in Russia. So he goes into Russia, does does it real badly, gets basically gets captured, <laughs> and uh, and then bear then they have to hire Barry to rescue him because they don't have any other field agents who they can send in to rescue him. Um, I love the opening of this one where it just sets up the whole premise through Ray like gossiping. Ray is just gossiping the premise of this episode and right. not realizing that he's gossiping it to Archer. Um, and then one of my favorite lines and jokes in this is after Archer punches out Barry, uh, he says something like, uh, and don't uh, don't stay unconscious for too long, Barry. It's super bad for you or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's really funny. But uh, yeah, this is like, it, how, what do you, how do you guys feel about White Knights? Like it's, it's a fun episode because it's like, I like the Barry stuff and I like him like having to escape Russia. Uh, but it feels like more straightforward spy. Like this feels like a straightforward it, spy it story. It is, yeah. That's it's super, it. super, just like a normal spy story. And I, I feel like it's the only like normal spy story in the season. Um, I like, I like it a lot. You, you'll see that when I tell you my rankings. But um, I didn't write very many notes down for this because I was just enjoying it, watching right. it. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool one. It's a fun one. I like, I like Barry. Barry is funny, like, and I think bringing Barry in to like rescue Archer is a really funny idea, like, because obviously yeah. he's got beef with them, and uh, and so him going in to save Archer, and then Archer screwing him over once again, and letting right. him fall to his letting him fall to his near death, um, is. It's a good recurring gag. Barry just hanging from stuff and and Archer letting him fall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, which this one obviously leads to uh, Bionic Barry, which we get to meet in Double Trouble. Um, yeah. Tariq, you got any thoughts about White Knights? Uh, there's another one where I thought the animation was great. Like all the action stuff that they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the later bits is uh, is all really really rad uh i was i was thinking about how like i remember a thing in the first season was is that like i remember the show looking a very specific way and in the first season they did a lot of choices that like i know they wouldn't do later on and they find it really they find it really fast this entire second season is just like this is exactly what i remember the show looking like and a lot of the stuff that they do at the end is like really really uh top tier like gorgeous shit um no doubt that's mostly what i that's mostly what i what my takeaway from this one was because like like we said it is very straightforward spy right but yeah yeah but it is fun it's engaging and it's like good stuff and i like them bringing back in like the kgb stuff and like and you know it doesn't really lead to any we don't really learn anything about whether or not Nikolai Jackoff is his father, do we? Do we do we get any answer on that in this episode? I mean, yeah, we don't really get an answer, but um they I mean, Jackoff does say like Mallory's been his only partner for 40 years or right. whatever the hell he said, and I don't think Archer's 40 years old, so Right. Um and that's but I mean, not like Mallory obviously has sex with a lot of people, so right. it doesn't really make that big of a difference, but we that are- was interesting and also like seeing Mallory like panicking about sterling maybe dying um well like i don't know a lot of the time she seems a little bit detached but yep. like you, you can see in those moments like she really 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 cares about him and like yeah. he's kind of like her whole world so um it, that that is interesting just like seeing her freak out yeah i like she seeing those idea. moments of her like real humanity for her son and mm-hmm. it's like and then and then her just like jubilation when she realizes it's barry she doesn't even give a shit about barry she's just yeah. like thank god right. <laughs> it's just yeah. barry um i do think i think you're right though i don't think but we don't get i feel like sometimes we get a definitive no like because like this one we don't get it obviously we i don't know if we ever learn who archer's dad is but we definitely don't they don't like count out Nikolai at the end of this like it's still there's still a chance that he could be because yeah. she basically says like <laughs> there's like a one like there's a one in three chance that you're his dad or something like that <laughs> um 
which is pretty funny. And I feel like the other one is maybe Len Trexler. I don't know. And then maybe Burt Reynolds. I think we I think we learn more about Burt Reynolds later. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, this is. And then the the fact that Archer like gets a okay. One thing that I had a hard time watching in this episode was Archer all of the glass in Archer's feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah oh i can't and him saying like he he should have gotten the tonight shot or the booster <laughs> yeah i uh i i have a hard time watching that even though it's just animated like there's so much glass in his feet so much glass. yeah he's like he's like oh, i maybe i shouldn't have taken the elevator but there's three pounds of glass in my feet <laughs> yeah and then and then he loses he like i mean he 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 was going to die and then he's saved yeah saved by katya right is that her name katya and um, and that's the end. That's the end of the episode. He gets saved by a Russian agent who wants to defect. Um, and that's and that's that. And then one leads us into the season finale, Double Trouble. You guys any other thoughts on White Knights before we move on? No. All no. right, Double Trouble. Let's do it. Finale. The season finale. Uh, this is the one where now Archer's new Russian girlfriend Katya is under suspicion of being a double agent, uh, while Barry who is now bionic and basically just the $6 million man uh, hunts down Archer to get revenge. So lots going on in this episode. Uh, but yes. I, th- I think what I love about this episode is just how unexpected it is that like Archer is genuinely like in love. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Archer, yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of sweet. Too. He loves Katya yeah. and he wants, and he will literally give up his entire life to continue to be with her. And that's pretty wild for a character like Archer as we've um, met him. Yeah. <laughs> right. it, it surprised me a lot. I mean, like, I was actually really sad when she gets hurt at the end, even if, like, I think that their relationship feels a little bit rushed in the yeah. scheme of, like, the, the pacing of the mm-hmm. these two episodes. But, yeah, like, I mean, when she gets hurt, he's literally just, like, sobbing over right, the edge. Yeah. Like, he's so emotionally attached to this, this person. And I feel like... Um, She's like the first time I, other than like him being distraught over maybe stuff with his mom when she has cancer, like she's kind of the first time that you see him like really being attached to another person like that. Other than like when he's like, you know, feeling cancer remorse or whatever. Right. But yeah, it was interesting to see him like genuinely in love without any like other external forces. Like he was just ride or die for Katya. Yeah, it was. And you know, like, yeah, I think there is definitely a degree of it feeling maybe a little rushed, but also like maybe that's just the nature of this kind of like, they're, they're like so deeply infatuated with each other. Although I guess we do learn that yeah. Katja has been like obsessed with Archer since she was in spy training, yeah. which I think is a fun twist on the episode. That's cute. Um, yeah, it's cute. And it's like, and I like that she's just like, she like confesses it. Like it's this deep secret and, and like little, little does she know that that's probably the, the best thing Archer could have heard as a, as a, pure totally. narcissist <laughs> you know like yeah. you've, you've right. been obsessed with me forever perfect <laughs> um but yeah it's like it's kind of sweet like they have like they, they literally get married it's like he he proposes to mm-hmm. her and everything and then in comes barry and uh we get bionic barry <laughs> and uh barry. Ugh, barry and then like the fact that she saves archer um, only for Barry to just be fine because he's by bi- right, he's, yeah. he's, he's a cyborg now. <laughs> he's yeah. not, um, that's uh, it's pretty sad. Pretty sad little uh, little way to end the episode. It's like it literally just ends. Obviously, there's a good joke in there at the end, but it literally just ends with Archer absolutely devastated. It's how they end season two of Archer is like right, he yeah. is lost and devastated because Katya basically just fell to her death. And then Krieger, yeah. Krieger pops in, <laughs> crying the man. same way. That's my man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but it's perfectly timed because he's crying. He's like, why are you crying? And then he clicks the fob and, and the alarm goes off. And the alarm stops going off and goes, that's my fan. <laughs> it's, just, it's a really good joke. Man, what a brutal way. Brutal way to end Archer season two. Yeah. Um, it was. It immediately made me want to start watching season three, and then sure. I watched the first like five minutes, and I was like, "I got stuff to do. I, I got to record a podcast in an hour." <laughs> I can't remember when they bring her back. I can't remember if it was immediate or if it was like later. But um, I, I feel do. Like it takes a little bit. Yeah, I think so too. And yeah, it's also yeah, yeah. There's a lot. We'll talk about it soon. Maybe next week. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, Who knows? Can't remember. But. 
Um, yeah, you guys have any other thoughts on Trouble, Trouble, Trouble? I think this is a really good... I think this is a really, really good season finale. Um, yeah, really good season finale. And what, it's up there up there on my list. And I, it's just like interesting to see... For whenever they subvert what you expect of Archer is what I'm learning I really like. Um, yeah. Be- because Archer is obviously like so established as this really awful narcissistic like just shitty man and then anytime they do something with him where he's all in on something that is not something you would expect of him something that is maybe a little more noble or a little more like a little less a little less self-centered than than you would expect of him i feel like they get some Mm -hmm. really good stories out of that uh and actually might be um that might be one of the uh themes of my my favorite episodes of the season so we'll see (laughs) Uh, you guys got any other thoughts on Double Trouble? Uh, there's a line in here that made me raise my eyebrow. Uh, we uh, I always fuck his name up, man. Krieger? Kruger? Yeah. Krieger. Krieger. It's Krieg. Krieger. Okay. When he says uh, uh, to the hologram, he says, you are just your mother all over. Like, what oh, the yeah, hell is that? Yeah, that made me raise my eyebrows, <laughs> too. Yep. Yep. <laughs> like, what but the also, hell is that? <laughs> His mother, her mother is just got to be another simulation though, right? Like, I know, like but it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's, at first, I, I, at first I, ch- it was one of the, it was like a weird double take thing for me. Cause I chuckled at first and then I thought about it a little too long. Right. I said, huh? <laughs> is maybe, is maybe the implication that the, that the, that the one that Lana destroyed earlier in the season was I, the mother? I think so. <laughs> But that yeah. makes it way worse. <laughs> but not really. But it does. I don't know, man. Like it's. It, I mean, it's all. Yeah, a, it's all. It it's all a computer. So like yeah, at the end of the day, it's I, weird. Yeah, it's, it's weird regardless. <laughs> but it's yeah. I don't yeah. fucking know, man. Yeah, but man, also like with just with Krieger, it's like, yeah, that's it's pretty weird. Krieger. But the Krieger is the character who we who in season one. Don't we learn that he's like. Was he filming bum fights or something? Like he's got a weird, he got a lot of weird, <laughs> a lot of weird stuff that he's into. <laughs> he's he's maybe not a character we should uh, think too deeply it's very about. True. Yeah, it's very uh, true. Um, all right. Well, how do you guys feel about? Like, I know we talked about this at the top, but like overall, season two. How do you feel about Archer season two? I know Tariq. It's been a few months, and Keeks. I don't know when the last time you watched season one was, but how you think? How you feel about it in relation to season one? What do you think about about Archer S two? I think the show gets funnier as it goes on. Personally, just um, because there's a lot of like jokes that build up over time, and like callbacks are one of my favorite types of humor. Um, so that I, I feel like they just keep building on it, and it rewards you for watching it. Um, like the episodes close together because you pick up on more of the in jokes. Um, I feel like the first half of the season, I was like, I, I think I said it this at the beginning. I was a little, like a little bit concerned about it um, and like wondering if I like had misremembered Archer. But I feel like in the second half of the season, it really starts to pick up the pace. And then mm-hmm. once they pick it up, it just keeps going, and every episode is like much more intense and like high action and hilarious um, as the season goes on. So ultimately I think it's a really well-paced season um, that does a lot of work establishing characters while also like telling a bunch of wacky stories and making me laugh the entire time. And my experience watching this definitely made me want to just go watch more Archer for pleasure, which is something I haven't done in years. Yeah. So um, mm. other than like, you know, just trying to keep up with the new seasons that come out. So right. yeah, it was great. Great. Yeah, that's I I agree with everything you said there. Like I think what I <laughs> I I love about I I think Archer season 2, I remember it being my favorite season comedically. Um and now rewatching it, I love A how funny it is and B how it really starts to dive into all of these characters in ways that season 1 didn't quite do. Season 1 started mm-hmm. to like started to get into them a little more, but like this one especially it gets into the side characters more in an interesting way. And it like even just, you know, a season and a half into the show, it starts to subvert some of our expectations of Archer in ways that create for some really interesting storytelling. 
Uh, and it's cool that they were able and capable of doing that so quickly into the show. You know, <laughs> like that's mm-hmm. like it feels oftentimes sometimes shows have to take a while to really establish what it is before they can start to like pull the rug out and subvert what you're expecting. But because Archer mm-hmm. has such strong characters, especially Archer himself from the very beginning, um, they are able to do that already already in season two, which now the show is 12 seasons deep. So like, it's crazy how quickly they were able to pull that off. Uh, Yeah. I love, I love season two a lot. Tariq, what do you got? What do you, how do you feel? Yeah, no, I, uh, I agree with everything you guys are saying, man. I, I, I enjoyed it. Like I did. Uh, It was only rough to watch because I'm so used to watching movies now, but (laughs) like, uh, (laughs) otherwise like, get used to it, man. We're back in TV land. (sighs) Oh man, I don't know how I feel about that, boy. I don't know. <laughs> Can we watch Beavis and Butthead do America again, please? <laughs> uh, hey, there's a Beavis and Butthead movie coming to Paramount Plus and 14 South Park movies, so we'll have we'll yeah. have some stuff. <laughs> to be right, able to that do. is true. That is true. Um, but yeah, no, that I enjoyed. I enjoyed this season. Um, lots of a lot more uh, great character stuff than in the first to like um all the characters are there in the first season but here is when they started like doing interesting pairings or like expanding on people's personalities and like that kind of stuff um really deconstructing like not just who these characters are but how they feel about each other and all that kind of stuff like all of that yeah uh i thought i thought was really cool that uh, when i see when i say my ranking like you'll notice that that's kind of what I, my biggest takeaway from a lot of these was uh, those kind of relationship stories. But yeah, no, nah, I had a good time. I enjoyed it. Hell yeah. Good season of television. Very funny. Um, okay. Should we do our rankings? Should we jump into the rankings? Yeah, yeah right, let's, man, do, let's it. do it. And Mikey, if you f- have them ranked and feel like jumping in, feel free. If not, no big deal. Yeah. Do, your hand people want that? Do, pe- oh. do people this is only a joke for us like nobody can see this so do people funny. want do, do people want us to list every episode four times four times that's a good question i do have yeah. a ranking though so yeah i would love to share it you know what let's, let's just go, go over them quick let's just do it quick i'm gonna go first 13 a going okay. concern 12 swiss miss 11 blood test 10 white knights 9 Je Mone- I don't know, the French one. The French title, can't say it. <laughs> Jean Monegasque. Monegasque. Uh, Monegasque. Uh, eight, Movie Star. Seven, Pipeline Fever. Six, Tragical History. Five, El Sequestro. Four, Stage Two. Three, Double Trouble. Two, The Double Deuce. One, Placebo Effect. Man, That's we me. line up a little bit at a certain point. Mm-hmm. It got a we little have scary. a lot of comments, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, who wants scary. to go next? Who wants to present to the I'll class? Do it. Yeah, let's go, Keeks. 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 All right. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay. Uh, bottom to the top: A Going Concern, Swiss Miss, Ju Monagaske, Movie Star, Blood Test, Pipeline Fever, Tragical History, Double Deuce, El Sequestro, White Knights, Double Trouble, Stage Two, Placebo Effect. Nice. Cool. Nice. We got some. We got some in common there. Yeah. All right, Mikey, you go. Let's do it. I feel like mine's a chaos bomb. (laughs) Okay. So 13, a going concern, 12, double trouble, 11, white knights, 10, movie star, nine, El Sequestro, eight, tragical history, seven, blood test, six, Swiss miss, five, double deuce, four, pipeline fever, three, placebo effect, two, stage two, one, je monegasque. Wow. Jeez. I love wow. that. I love you that guys. you Yeah, I love that yeah, though. That's geez. great. But also, cool. so that. far all three of us a going concern is number 13. <laughs> we don't like a going concern. <laughs> or Man, like at least at the very I feel end. mean about it cuz I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's forgettable, but there's good stuff in it. <laughs> yeah. Um Tariq, let's go. All right. So I'm instantly breaking it. Uh <laughs> Uh, 13, uh, Tragical History, 12, Blood Test, 11, White Knights, 10, Double Trouble, 9, uh, France, 8, <laughs> Movie Star, 7, uh, Pipeline Fever, 
uh, six, Swiss Miss, uh, five, Placebo Effect, four, A Going Concern, three, L. Uh, sequestro. You didn't, it, it, it was sequestro. Number two, uh, Stage Two, and number one, The Double Deuce. Wow. We all like, yeah. There's there's a big a big variety here in all four of these rankings. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And you, yeah, it was, it's especially interesting because like three of us had one of them at the bottom, and that's and it's closer to the top for you. It's like right. Top five. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, that's yeah. why I'm like, oh uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, good stuff though. Good stuff. Um, totally. Well, I feel like that's uh, that's a good episode that we did there. What's uh, what's I think I think we should probably wrap wrap things up now. We got a solid yeah. two hours here on the on the on the block. Uh, Keeks, two hour purple pod. Yeah, two hour purple pod. Um, Keeks, why don't you plug whatever you want to plug? Okay, I'm Offbeat Kiki. I make nostalgia and cartoon-based video essays on YouTube. I also like to talk about life lessons. I try to nurture my inner child's interests while viewing these topics under the lens of modern adulthood. Um, and I'm also doing some film reviews recently, trying to get into more international films and get some animation out in front of my viewers that they might not have heard of otherwise. I'm also a musician and an artist. I do a lot of things. <laughs> Hell yeah. You can find me everywhere at Offbeat Kiki. Hell yeah. Mike, thanks you want to put me? Yeah, thanks for coming on. We're going to, we'll have you on more. You know, you're the, you're obviously our first, uh, <laughs> first our first, first, re- our first repeat, repeat guest, right? Hell yeah. yeah. I love yeah. that. I love being a guest on this podcast. First repeat guest. <laughs> Offbeat repeat. <laughs> Mike, you want to plug anything since you jumped in for the, the, the ranking? Check out Cartoons That Curse. Uh, it's a podcast <laughs> on YouTube, <laughs> on Spotify, Apple. Oh, uh, hell yeah. All right. Well, uh, with that, let's say yeah. thank you to you, Mikey. Mikey Eunice, thank you for uh, producing and editing our podcast. It's called Cartoons That Curse. I'm heard, sure you heard about it. Uh, oh thank God. you to Carrie Feek for our amazing artwork. Thank you to Jake Neutron for our earworm of a theme song. Thank you to Tariq for co-hosting. Thank you to Kiki for guesting. Thank you to Mikey for jumping in and talking about a show we all like. And uh, thank you to you, the audience, for watching and or listening to our show. And with right. that, thank you very much. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.